Center One. It is. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to the opening drive on 101 ESPN. It's 7 o'clock in St. Louis. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Traffic and weather together. Uh, well, I'll give you some traffic in a little bit. Okay. But we, we just gave you the time. Uh, we will tell you that the uh, the weather is actually extraordinary in St. Louis. It's 65 degrees. Woo-hoo. 65 degrees at 7 o'clock on 101 ESPN in St. Louis. Woo-hoo. And uh, here, let's check. You want me to take the jacket? Yeah, sure. Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Gary Davis is here. Uh, and uh, here I go up and check chapter one, and it looks uh, crystal clear out on Olive in Creve Court, east and westbound. I'm sure it's that way with every highway in the St. Louis metro area. <laughs> so just enjoy your morning. If you're stuck in traffic, be patient, and we'll have a great show for you here today on 101 ESPN. I am Captain Randy Carriker. I'm 101 ESPN Jack Copter 2. How are we doing, kids? How about those blues? Great. Wow. The blues. I mean... Just go ahead and restart the season right now. Everything is fixed. Nothing to see here, uh, right? Uh, Jeff Fisher has done that before in St. Louis. Mm, I, I, give me one. More, give me. Give me th- two to three games in a row. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll see, let you know after that. Seeing after, that, some consistency. Yeah, yeah. The Canucks tonight. Uh, let me see what they do. Yeah. See, they, they outshot an opponent for was, the first time uh, now, this season. Listen, hey, yeah. thirty-five to twenty-six. Yeah. As awesome. much as we've talked about it, and, and as much as I've talked about it, and as much as we've been told that it wasn't an issue, it seemed like it needed to be fixed, and it was fixed last night. Yeah, so <laughs> well, maybe maybe we're not crazy. I don't know. I don't we know. will uh, <laughs> keep that up. We're going to talk to Lindenwood coach Jed Stugart in just a few moments. The uh, Lions are at Tennessee State this weekend. Not a really great college football weekend, by the way. Uh, what, what did we determine, Matthew, that the game of the weekend was? I don't even remember what. Oh, uh, Oregon, was, Utah. Oregon, Utah. Yeah. And then, and I, I, I do UCLA think UCLA and. You see, like, Colorado's going to be fun. Yeah. I think potentially Georgia, Florida has a chance to be one hell of a game at the 230 slot. So there you go. But no, uh, no top 10 games that you have this weekend. We're also going to talk to Roman Berkey. He and uh, St. Louis City SC getting ready to take on Sporting Kansas Sunday night over at City Park in the first ever postseason game for St. Louis City SC. It'll be incredible over there. It will be. I'm so excited. Even if it's late, I, I think everybody's going to be super ready. Are they going to pass out Red Bulls? They have to. They should. Mm-hmm. There should be a lot of Red Bulls. It's got to be a different energy drink because Red Bull's a team. Oh, yeah, you're right. We, okay. Until we play Monster them. drink. Ooh. Yeah. And here, Monster's a good one. Here's the thing about Roman Berkey, by the way. Goalkeeper of the year finalist, but not a finalist for the MVP, and I'm, I'm hopping mad about that. Uh, mm. Yeah. I, I saw I you hopping like when either. I was walking in. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. And then Joe Vitale is going to join us from Vancouver at 915. Yeah. Kerry Davis and his Hazelwood Central Hawks taking on Pattonville tonight. First playoff game this year for the Hawks. Good yes. luck with that. Thank you, sir. Uh, that'll be great. All right, here's the way things unfolded for your St. Louis Blues last night. And uh, special teams have been an issue, okay? But the Blues penalty kill came through 11-23 into the game. Kasperi Kapanen, number 42, made it one nothing. Kadri turned it over to Sundquist. Throws it into space. Kapanen, shorthanded break. Shoot, score! Kasperi Kapanen, a shorthanded goal. And the Blues take a one nothing lead. 8.37 to go, first period. Two minutes later, a lot of people complained before the game, wondering why Kevin Hayes was in the lineup. And he showed everybody why when Nick Letty scored at the 13-24 mark. Torepchenko finds Hayes moving in. Hayes, challenged by Gilbert, goes into the far side to the blue line. Letty, one-timer, score! That puck was tipped in front, but it might have been off of a flame. And if it was, it's Nick Letty's goal with 6.36 to go in the first. Two-nothing Blues on a one-timer from Nick Letty. His first of the year, Kevin Hayes and Torepchenko with the assists. And if you're watching the game, Kevin Hayes held onto the puck for about five seconds. We talk about puck possession. He kept the puck from the opposition. He did what he's here to do. Yeah, he used his body really well to protect the puck there. And you were talking about people being hopping mad because Mm -hmm. before the game, Jacob, Jakub Verana, 
he was sidelined. He was scratched from the game, and a lot of people were upset with that. Going with 11 forwards and seven defensemen, and immediately the reaction on social media is, why is Kevin Hayes in this game and not Vrana? That was something that paid off in this moment. It seems like there was something maybe more going on behind the scenes with Verona, why we didn't see him. We saw that Ruby was definitely upset with his play with what happened against Winnipeg because he even mentioned, he said, we need more from him. It's all honest play on the ice, and he's got to be better. Sometimes Ruby does this where he sends a message, not only to that player, but the rest of the players of, look, if I don't see you giving the effort that I want to see, then it's going to result in this. Because that third period, you remember what happened in Winnipeg, right? Mm -hmm. It was a tough third period for him, including a, pen a penalty, right, that nullified a power play and a bad turnover there. So when Bruby didn't like that, that's what resulted in Verona getting sidelined for that game. Uh, CD, you are a, a athlete. You are a coach. Mm -hmm. If a player gets benched and he doesn't like it, you say... You don't like it, play better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. You did it. What the hell are you mad at me for? Enjoy the snacks in the press box. Right, what are we yeah. talking about? <laughs> no scoring in the second period. Then in the third, empty net, and Sonny came home. I'll tell you, the blue line. Here's another shot launched and deflected wide. Sunquist slaps it to the empty net. Score! Oh. Angled off the post and slid in. Oscar Sundquist will get the empty net goal, his second point of the game, 2.07 to go in the third. And as we headed down the stretch, guys, it was not Jordan Biddington that was angling for the shutout. Rimmed around to the far side. Another chance in front, blocked away by Bortuzzo. And bring out the Zamboni. The first career shutout for Joel Hofer. A 26 save, 3 0 win over the Calgary Flames. Here at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. Goalie controversy. Nah. Oh, goalie Maybe not. controversy. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> it was good, one, for him to get his first NHL shutout. And just to see his resilience to be able to bounce back after that first start that he had that was rough, as we all saw, for him to be able to bounce back was huge. It was. I mean, it was a good game for the entire team. They, they looked great. Um, the effort and energy looked like it was completely there. Yeah, are they going to do it tonight? Uh, that's the question. It, it, it feels like every other game, they have a great game. They play hard, they play well, and then the next game, they kind of have a letdown. So I think the, the most important thing for them tonight is the consistency, keeping that same energy. And I do like any time a coach – you know, sits a guy, he's not only sending a message to that guy, he's sending it to the entire team. Yeah. Hey, if you are not going to play to the level, to the standard of what we need, you will not play. And then the next step for you not playing is you not being here. So as a player, I tell you all the time, I, my, my coach told me, our job is to tolerate you till we can replace you. Mm -hmm. Our job every day is to find someone better than you. And your job, our job as players, is to not allow them to find anyone better than me. Mm -hmm. So every single day, there's that push and pull in a good way. It's competition. I'm, I'm trying to be my best. They're trying to replace you with their best. And every single day, you go out there with the mindset, I got to do my job. If not, I will not have a job. So hopefully... That uh, that sent a message not only to to Verona but to the entire team, and they can say, "Hey, we got, we know what we can do. We know what we have to do. Just go out there and do it." Safe to say, number fifteen won't be in the lineup tonight as the Blues take on Vancouver. It's a uh, an eight o'clock pregame, nine o'clock faceoff here on one hundred and one ESPN, and uh, you have to believe that the Chief will go with the same lineup that he went with in the three nothing win last night. That three nothing win here is Chief. Yeah, it was you know a good solid sixty minutes tonight. I thought. Um... You know, we right from the get-go in the game, I liked the way we were moving and skating and playing. You know, our forecheck, we established that right away. We talked about that in our cycle game. You know, it was good. It was great. Congratulations to the St. Louis Blues. Meanwhile, Thursday night football last night, Buffalo held off Tampa Bay 24-18. to 18. Tampa Bay is just not that good. No, they're not, but Buffalo might not be that good either. No, no. I mean, Buffalo had an opportunity to lose that game on a last pass if Chris Godwin just happens to turn around a half a second earlier and the ball hits the ground. He, he's uncovered. He turned around, got pulled and turned around. It, it just... Buffalo, I think that game was more indicative of what Buffalo isn't than than maybe what the the Bucks aren't. I, I just, I'm not too thrilled about what I see from Buffalo right now. What I, what don't you like? It just it doesn't feel like for all of the 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 hubbub for how great they were supposed to be this year, 
they don't feel like a team that can put teams away. You you look at what they did a couple of weeks ago against the Giants. Should have lost that game. You go to Jackson. You go to uh, London and play Jacksonville. Lackluster effort. Just you know, I, you can you can knock it off to saying, oh, they showed up late and that's why they lost. But it just hasn't been the effort that I expected from this team all season long has not been there, and it hasn't been it hasn't been a great. And then you lose to the Patriots last week. Like that's four games in a row. They should have lost all four mm-hmm. uh, and could have lost all four. You beat the, the the Giants and the Bucks. Those aren't great wins in the manner in which you won. You won by one score in both of those games, and you should have beat the hell out of them, and they both were at home. So. And this this felt like this was a better all-around offensive performance, but to your point, CD, it's not what I think people were expecting on the Bills. No. What did you think of Josh Allen? I know that there was kind of some injury concern just a little bit there, but he was able to settle in the rest of the game. I think Josh Allen is a, a tough individual, but I know Josh Allen is going to turn the ball over at some point. Mm-hmm. I, I just, you know, death taxes, Josh Allen turning the ball over. It's, it's inevitable. It's going to happen, and it's it's going to bite them in the butt at some point. It's going to be the thing that pre- prevents them from having a championship team because he cannot turn the ball over. You cannot play in the manner in which you do. Now, they've had some injuries on the defensive side. Matt Milano, your your linebacker, goes out. Trey, Trey White, uh, your cornerback, goes out for the for the second year, I think, in a row, second or third, second out of two, two or three years. But it's just the – constant not not looking right for me I'm, I'm all about you know continuity and teams looking just doesn't look right from buffalo's end and uh, josh allen w- with the interception last night ties jalen hurts for the league lead in interceptions hurts and jimmy g along with football. josh allen Josh jimmy g ain't even played in all the games you got a lot of them man. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> still, this is concerning yep. just real quick on the bucks what do you think about what's going on with them with baker mayfield too because they got off to a hot start and then in fizzle uh, i think it's it's coming back to you know the the the, what they were supposed to be. I don't think – I think Baker was playing, you know, extremely well out of his mind, but this is probably what I think most people expected the Buccaneers to be. Not a – maybe they win the division because that division is terrible, but uh, I don't think anyone expected them to be a, a 10-win, 10-win, 11-win team. I don't know uh, if Baker Mayfield – what has changed? I, I, one of the things I loved about Mike Martz, he always told his players, play fast, be aggressive. And I've seen times where – Baker Mayfield plays fast and he's aggressive, but man, he did not look like he was aggressive last night. I don't think, I don't know if he can be. I don't know if it's, it just feels, I, to Baker's, you know, I give him some, some to his, come to his defense a little bit. I want, Baker is what, five years in the league now, six mm-hmm. years? He's probably had five or six different offensive right. coordinators in that time. He hasn't had the consistency, the continuity year after year. Even when he was with the Browns, it was a new offensive coordinator, a new head coach pretty much every single year. That's hard to to really become a good player or the best version of yourself. I think he was good earlier in the season, but again, I think he's kind of regressed into what he was supposed to be. And to your point, his best stretch in the NFL was last year when he played under Sean McVay. There you go. Yeah, so maybe that's what he needs is better coaching maybe we're off and running here on uh, this friday edition of the opening drive on 101 espn coming up the lindenwood lions at tennessee state tomorrow we're going to talk to their head coach jed stugart about that and then a big nfl weekend on tap we're going to touch on that as well here on 101 espn
after a bye week, the Lindenwood Lions Division I football team back in action tomorrow in Nashville. They take on Tennessee State. Brooke Grimsley, Kerry Davis, Randy Carricker. We head to the Celebrity Line. And Jed Stewart, the head coach at Lindenwood, joins us as he does on Friday mornings. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Hey, good morning, y'all. How y'all? Everything's great. How did you handle the bye week? Did you get like a couple of days where you did something? We did. We just we uh, practiced a couple days uh, uh, last week, and then kind of gave the guys uh, some time off to heal, and and uh, and we kind of went out recruiting a little bit. So it was a good opportunity to. I uh, wish we could have just rested, but there's no rest for the weary. We mm-hmm. got to get back out on the recruiting trails. So that's where uh, that's what we did. Okay, so and then came back and had good energy here this last week. So, Coach, I was watching an interview with Nick Saban uh, yesterday. He said this weekend on his bye, he's going to the lake. I just anticipated that you and Saban are, you know, probably uh, <laughs> socioeconomically at the same level. Let's see, I figured you'd go to the lake <laughs> to, to your giant lake house this weekend. Yeah, uh, Saban can sit at the lake and make phone calls, and and uh, and, and people commit to him. We, we still got a little bit of work. To do. <laughs> coach, as Randy mentioned, you guys are facing off against TCU this weekend, and they have a head coach over there that is a Titans legend, Eddie George, his second year at the helm over there at TCU. What is it like facing off against not only TCU but him as a coach? Well, I played linebacker, and I'm grateful that this game doesn't mean that him and I have to go hit. <laughs> so, first of all, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, you know, I can just stand on the other sideline. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, I've had a chance to, to meet and get to know him a little bit, um, you know, at our, our conference meetings the last couple of years. Uh, you know, great guy. Um, really great to stand there and talk to and, and uh you know, so I um, think it's great, to, you know, obviously him giving back, you know, a guy as well known as him and, and uh, also got a couple other friends, you know, that coach on that staff. And and uh, so, um, yeah, but, you know, it's uh, I think once the game starts, I mean, you kind of run across a lot of people that have, um, you know, you've played in the NFL, been well known and, and uh, you don't get uh, you don't get too starstruck with that, you know, because you're now you're back in both elements and, and just coaching ball. But it's a, it is a pretty cool thing, and you know, it's something that we talked about a long time ago. We didn't make any issues of playing in the playing in Nissan Stadium and Eddie George as a coach and all this stuff. That's something we kind of talked about a long time ago. Uh, the kind of you know because it is a cool thing. There's nothing nothing wrong to to think that's a cool thing. But then you know, this week's been all about business and. And all that outside noise just has to kind of go away. Coach, it feels like first quarters have kind of been the Achilles heels in, in those losses that you've had. How do you get the guys to, you know, mindset to start off early to not be punched, but to actually punch in the first quarter? Well, it's curious to have you come tell them that. <laughs> uh, because, cause, uh, you know, we have told them that till we're blue in the face, so I'm going to have you come talk to them. I'm now gladly come do it. But, uh, you know, you know, it's it's that's such a fun. I heard, you know, I heard a couple of coaches o- over the bye week just sitting around, you know, kind of watching football when you could. And it's funny how many, you know, that's just one of those things that's the great mystery out there with with teams. Uh, you know, you kind of have those years where you have a team that just comes out and starts fast, and then, you know, the one time we decided to come out and start fast, you know, we ended up shutting the team out and, and winning um, against t- Tennessee Tech, and. And, uh, you know, then we turn around and, and uh, you know, go to Charleston Southern and, and end up kind of having another, another slow start. Um, and uh, But it's a great mystery, man. But you, you achieve what you emphasize. And I think, you know, you just continually in practice try to figure out ways to emphasize that and through your practice, through your strategies and practice, because, you know, hopefully it just transfers over. And that's something that we did focus on a lot in this last two weeks. Ted, you, you lose your quarterback for the season, and last year Cole had been able to get into a, a lot of action. So you had kind of a seamless transition to Cole Duggar as your or as your quarterback. What has it been like now going to a quarterback that really doesn't have as much experience as ha- Cole had coming in? Well, you know, last yeah, and that's Carter Davis, and mm-hmm. you know Carter uh, had his first start you know a couple weeks ago and and did so many great things. But of course, the quarterback position so so. Uh, highlighted and it is such a crucial uh, position and so sometimes those mistakes can be glared a little bit more uh, you know they they're, they're more glaring but you know it, all the other good things they do you just have to you know it, it, it's this year we've had you know two quarterbacks that were going to be making their first starts and you hope that you only have one that has to do that but we've had two and uh, you, you just got to 
you got to just keep coaching them and keep, you know, when, once they, it's quick how, you know, especially when they, you know, Carter watching the Southern Charleston Southern game and him recognizing, oh, this is where I should have went with the ball or this is the decision I've made. Uh, you know, is another quick learner, you know, had a good week of practice, you know, um, you know, it's just, you got to get, you got to get them on film. You got to get them learning and, and uh, the, you know, a, a real game, you know, people, it's, the whole game just moves faster than it does at practice. And so, you know, uh, I think Carter will bounce back, um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's tough on him and we, he's got, you know, we're starting a freshman center and we're starting, you know, we've got, we've got six key starters done for the season, you know, this year. And, and so, you know, Carter's, uh, you know, a lot of adversity, a lot of other teams are going through this kind of uh, adversity, but, uh, you know, he's got to, you know, guys just got to rally and rise up and a lot of young guys got to grow up uh, this tomorrow uh, for him, well, you know, and kind of rally around him. Well, good luck tomorrow in Nashville and thanks very much for your time. It's the Lions at Tennessee State tomorrow, two o'clock, and you can, of course, see that game on ESPN+. Plus. Jed, thanks so much. Take care. Appreciate it. Okay, See you later. Jen Stugart, the head coach at Lindenwood, with us on 101 ESPN. Meanwhile, Mizzou has the weekend off. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we have Florida and Georgia here on 101 ESPN. I, I don't gamble much. What is the Florida-Georgia line? Oh, oh, boy, I oh see what you my there. gosh. <laughs> well Randy, played. I can just tell well you were played. gearing up. I was like, where is this going? <laughs> you, you have this giveaway when you're about to tell a joke that you, you're you just like gearing up for it. You can see if you can see us on the Air Alliance team studio cams, by the way, where you can see Randy just gearing up for that joke. I was like, somebody's coming here. That was funny. I like that one. That's good. So I, I wonder. Uh, 14 and a half. There you go. Okay, Thank there you. You. <laughs> okay no sense of humor here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I definitely wasn't going to use that joke in the betting slip. <laughs> oh, I, I stole it, huh? There you go. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Mizzou does coming out of the bye because their next game, obviously, is Georgia. And really, you don't want Georgia, Georgia to lose this game. You want Georgia to win, but you want it to be a real physical game where they get beat up. Well, yeah. If you're a Mizzou fan. If you're a Mizzou fan, you want you want them to have a little bit of attrition. The little, little wear down after this mm-hmm. game coming into Mizzou. And, and hopefully Mizzou is, you know, they're, they're getting their bodies healed. They're getting ready for a tough challenge next week to go against Georgia at Georgia. You know, it's the biggest game of the year. And, and again, We've said this, Missouri has no one to look to other than themselves. If they want to be SEC East champions, if they want to play in the SEC cha- East in the SEC championship game, they have nowhere to look but right in the mirror, and everything that they want is in front of them. There are no excuses, none from the fans, none from the peanut gallery. It is from Missouri if they want to take care. If they want it, they have to go out and get it. It is all in front of them. So when you look around, I don't want to hear people saying, oh, we would have been, we could could have been no you can be if you take care of your business and it's all in front of you and i would argue that lsu this year is as good as georgia is Mm -hmm. and missouri was right there with lsu that missouri lost that game i don't think lsu (laughs) took it from them as much as mizzou gave it to them and i know it's on the road in georgia that was what that was what i was going to say next now this is a road game in comparison to losing at home versus lsu that makes a little bit of a difference it does. And with Georgia, I'd be interested to see, you're talking the, about them being a little bit banked mm-hmm. up, what they look like offensively without Bowers. That is something mm-hmm. to look for. Yeah. Huge. And But they are Georgia, so they have plenty of depth, so that's not going to be an issue for them. It sounds like it's going to be Delp that I believe that will be stepping in, mm-hmm. taking over that number one tight end role. But Bowers, obviously, is a huge loss for Georgia either way. Yeah. Guys, Michigan sells itself as this bastion of integrity the University of Michigan and their football team. How do you keep Jim Harbaugh around? You had Hamburger Gate, you had the sign stealing, and now you've got the FBI investigating one of their assistant coaches for doing essentially what Chris Correa of the Cardinals did in stealing mm-hmm. information, unauthorized computer access crimes. The, the CEO of the situation is Jim Harbaugh. If you're Michigan and you sell yourself as what you sell yourself as, how do you keep Jim Harbaugh around? It all starts at the top, mm-hmm. and either... You know about it and you're allowing it or you don't know about it, which is just as bad mm-hmm. because you don't know what's going on in your own uh, in your own building. I don't know if this falls on him. I think it might be one of those Pete Carroll situations that happened at USC where he knew the 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 uh, penalty was coming down. Yeah, you know what? I got to mm-hmm. get up out of here. Let me go and go back to the NFL and get to the Seattle Seahawks. Maybe you find something like that. There are going to be some jobs opening. 
shortly in the NFL. Chargers, uh, Bears. Chargers, Bears. Uh, I was gonna say Commanders. Um, a couple of a couple mm-hmm. of opportunities um, that that you could find yourself in if you're Jim Harbaugh that you would probably appreciate more than you know not having a job at all. Everything that's coming out about this is interesting. That assistant coach apparently too had a that was involved in the sign stealing and was kind of orchestrating this. He also had a 600-page manifesto of nope. how he was planning on taking over the program. Essentially, did mm. you guys see this? No. Report? I like this. It's do you? I don't know. Sometimes when oh. manifestos included in a conversation, it's typically not a good thing. Oh no, it's, uh, it's, 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 he's passionate. Listen, he's, is that what that is? Made yeah. me a positive he's, manifesto in the yeah. last hundred years. He has, yeah. he has goals in life. Yeah. <laughs> he has goals in life. You, you, CD, your thoughts? I, 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 <laughs> seems I don't, like you seems like you have some thoughts on I this. Just, I'm just here. I'm just here so I don't get fired. <laughs> if somebody, okay, CD, if one of your assistant coaches said, "Hey, hey, coach, I got this. I got this 600-page manifesto of how to improve <laughs> what we have going on in the football program." What would you say? Do you, would you say, "Oh, I would say no, thank you." I would ask him, I would ask him, "Do you think your time could have been used elsewhere other than?" Whatever the hell this is, sir. A, A, that's number one. B, do you think I'm going to read through 600 pages worth of anything that you wrote? Aaron Rodgers would. Uh, well, he can have it. He give it to A Rod. You go ahead. Here's the other thing. Tell him, give the, me the cliff notes. Okay, so. The cliff notes. If, Har- if Harbaugh would bolt for the National Football League and Michigan has an opening and you don't really push Harbaugh out, he just leaves. If you are, Michigan. Do you talk to Urban Meyer? No. We, can we leave Urban no. Meyer where he is? <laughs> can we? Is he doing TV still? Yeah, he is. Let him do TV. He don't have any kickers to kick. He doesn't have any anybody to talk down to. Hey, just stay there because it obviously didn't work out in the NFL. And it it's not going to work out in collegiate football anymore because those players are getting paid. So, therefore, the conversations shift. When one party has a lot of money and the other party has none, eh, you can kind of get away with some things. When one party has a lot of money but the other party has some dollars on the, in their pockets, yeah, you might want to uh, you might want to leave those guys alone. Yeah. At the end of the day, with Michigan, once the FBI gets involved in your organization, you better be looking over your shoulder. You can say that about any organization. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Once, once yeah. the fans start taking a peek, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's time yeah. to find something else to do. And I'll, there's a manifesto involved. Their ears perked up. They're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta really investigate everything that's going on here. There's something weird going on. How's Bill solving Kansas basketball doing? Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. Teflon yeah. down. Just fine. Well, just, yeah. just fine. Yeah. That is not the first manifesto written by somebody in the state of Michigan, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Tossing that out there as reality. Uh, coming up, on one of, Matthew, are you flabbergasted that I would know something like this? I don't. I, I need to find out what you're referring to because I think I know what you're referring to. I need to find out. The yeah, there's a few militia people out there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah don't yeah. they? In Michigan, I think Michigan has more militia people than any yeah. any other state in the country, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was a Henry Ford joke, to be honest. Oh, no. Uh, Hank. Oh, oh, Hank. Hey, come Coming up, uh, we're going to tell you why the Miami Dolphins are not just going to beat the New England Patriots this weekend. They're going to trample them. That's next on 101 ESPN.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. Last night, the Blues with a 3 0 win over the Flames. They're back in action with a late one tonight in Van Blank and Coover. They will face off uh, against the Canucks with a 9 p.m. puck drop. It means you can start the pregame right here on 101 ESPN at 8 p.m. Also, last night, it was Monday Night Football. So, excuse me, Thursday night football, primetime games. Bills over the Buccaneers, 24 to 18, kicking off an NFL weekend. Also, speaking of kicking off a series of this weekend, it is the World Series tonight. First pitch, 7.03. It'll be Zach Gallen for the Diamondbacks taking on, taking on Nathan Eovaldi for the home team, the Texas Rangers. That is your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your road to shop 24 7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Time for some NFL news and notes. We have the Dolphins and Patriots for you at noon on Sunday. The game is at Miami. The Dolphins are a nine and a half point favorite. They've had some injury issues. Here is Adam Schefter of ESPN talking about what is facing Miami. Adam Schefter, number two. Never. Talking about the Tyreek Dolphins. Hill told reporters today that he does, in fact, plan to play on mm -hmm. Sunday for the Miami Dolphins. That is good news for the Dolphins. It looks like he is on track to play. And with Mostert back at practice today as well, it looks like the two players who did not participate in practice on Wednesday, both will be there playing for the Dolphins on Sunday. Not only that, but see, we've subsequently learned that Jalen Ramsey is going to play for Miami, his first game for the Dolphins against New England. If you want a, a rock-solid prediction from Randy, Jalen Ramsey will pick off Mac Jones on Sunday. Oh, I mean, I, man, is that, you're not really going out on it. No, I'm not. Okay. Mac Jones is not good. Nine and, yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> Nine and a half point line, I say Miami covers against New England. I agree. I think Miami is, I don't think it'll be that close. I think they are the better team, the way that they put up points. They had a couple of weeks off where they were kind of in lull and not, not great offensively. Guys are going to be good to go. I think it's going to be a great game for Miami and not so much for the Patriots. Bad seasons are generally not fun. They're not fun for fans. But if your team is disassembling, at least from a reporter's standpoint, it can be fun to watch everything kind of disintegrate. Uh, Brooke, that's happening with your Tennessee Titans. Oh uh, it, it's, You're a fan, though. It's different for I'm you. I'm a fan, so this is painful. This is very painful to see. The white flag has been raised, guys. The, the Tennessee Titans are dismantling. I know they were talking about it this morning on Unsportsmanlike, where Evan even mentioned, does it matter if they win this weekend on how they approach the trade deadline? And Chris Canty said, nope, they're, they're already moving, guys. You already yeah. moved Kevin Byard, who is a fantastic safety for the Tennessee Titans. A lot of Tennessee connections with him there. He's very well loved from the fans. And now there's even more reports with Derrick Henry, as we discussed the past few days, about him being possibly moved. And then another layer to the story, according to reports with some of the beat writers with the Titans, DeAndre Hopkins was supposed to have a signing event somewhere in Tennessee locally, and he basically told them to hold off until after the trade deadline. So to me, this this sounds like a complete dismembering, dismantling, rebuild. We're just going to have to start from scratch here, and Will Levis will likely be your starting quarterback this weekend. How about I don't that? know what to make about any of this with the Tennessee Titans, and where do you go from here? It, uh, it, it gets greater later. I think that's the best way to put it. <laughs> it's the only way to put it. it. It's not going to be very good this year. Um, whether they win or lose this weekend, they have a chance to win against the Falcons. I think they, they I think they can win, but it depends on what you get from Will Levis, from Malik Willis. I don't think Ryan Tannehill is going to play. And you're you're dealing with a team that now has drafted two quarterbacks in the past two years, trying to figure out <clears throat> which one of those two guys can actually lead this franchise going forward, or if they can at all, if they have to go back to the draft next season, uh, next draft to find another quarterback. Well, and if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Yeah, and they got and you three. have three. There you go. So what is that even? <laughs> Less than none. Just a quick follow-up with the whole Jalen Ramsey situation. Did you guys see on X, because it was Adam Schefter that was reporting about Jalen Ramsey and that he would be returning. Mm -hmm. Did you see that Jalen Ramsey responded to it and he was confused and actually irritated? He said, so this is why I got a crazy amount of texts. Well, this is news to me. 
MFs, I think you guys know what that mm-hmm. means, don't care about being right. They care about being the first in today's media. That's sad. Does that sound like Jalen Ramsey is going to play this weekend? No, it doesn't. Adam Schefter, and that was Adam Schefter's tweet that he responded to. What are your thoughts on that? Because I, being a part of the media, being a reporter, I agree with what Jalen Ramsey is saying. I think that there is a lot of people who are more focused on being first to a story mm-hmm. rather than being accurate sometimes. And Adam Schefter fits the bill on that sometimes. I don't think, though, that Schefter would report it unless he got it from the Dolphins. Yeah. If he didn't get it from Jalen, man, might not be accurate. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but there's a lot of people. Uh, like Adam Schefter is tied in tight with Kevin Demoff. All Rams news that you get from Adam Schefter comes from Kevin Demoff. He's got somebody in every organization. Mm-hmm. And clearly, whether it was Mike McDaniel or Chris Greer or Stephen Ross, somebody in the Dolphins organization thought that Ramsey was going to play. Well, now Ramsey, I guess, is playing? Yeah, maybe not. If I'm Ramsey, my first text is like, hey, to my agent, like, hey, did you... Josh Jeff or something? Yeah, right. One guy who is not going to play, and we don't know when he's going to play, is Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. He met with the media yesterday, says he doesn't know when he'll be able to play as he continues to rehabilitate his injured shoulder, and admitted he doesn't know how long the injury is going to linger. There was a report, Dan Graziano on ESPN, suggesting that this could be a long-term shoulder injury. We know how dicey shoulder injuries are with pitchers, Mm -hmm. and he wouldn't be the first quarterback to be taken down by a shoulder injury. Well, like I said, I, I hope it is a serious injury, a severe injury, and not in, a, not in the way that people think. I hope it is because if he's not injured and and he's just kind of milking it and not taking care of it the way he needs to, that that's bad for every other player that comes after him trying to get a guaranteed contract. So, you know, it's it's unfortunate if it is injured in the way he says it is, and, and it's unfortunate not only for him, but for this Browns team that sacrificed a lot, <laughs> spent a lot of money, uh, had a lot of conversation about what they were doing going and getting him uh, and signing him to that contract to not have him be able to play. It, it's And it's fully guaranteed. So, you know, I guess mm-hmm. it's good and bad. It's a Good for him, contract. bad for them. Yeah. It's still silly. I wanted to ask you, we were talking about the trade deadline because that's happening Tuesday. Do you think that there is a game this weekend that, depending on the final result, win or lose, will change the tra- trajectory of how a team approaches the trade deadline? I'm kind of looking at that Vikings and Packers game. Do you think that that could change I don't think things? Kirk Cousins is going anywhere. Or I think Danielle that's done Hunt, now. Daniel Hunter either. I don't think, yeah, because the when you're looking at the Vikings, they are second in the NFC uh uh, north behind the Detroit Lions. Det- Detroit Lions play the uh, Raiders this weekend on Monday night. They should win, but there's a possibility that anything could happen. The Vikings are a team that is finding ways to win. They have played every game they've played in has been a one-score game, meaning it could be won or lost, uh, and they've been on the losing side more than, than the winning side. But they are a team. They're 1-0 and in the division. They still have a chance to catch the Detroit Lions if they play well. So, I don't think that Minnesota decides to do anything with Kirk Cousins. I think he stays there, which he should. And I think they re-sign him at the end of the season, which they should. It's amazing how quickly the conversation changed. They're not going to find anybody better in the draft. That This team is going to win eight to nine games. They're going to be in the middle of the draft and maybe more, depending on how the season goes. They are not going to find a quarterback that can replace Kirk Cousins that is going to be better than what he is. Brooke, let me give you one. Washington is three and four. They beat Philadelphia. They're four and four and squarely in the hunt for a wild card spot. They're three and five and they don't have a chance. And Chris Young is, or Chase Young is in the final year of his contract. That's one player that I could see becoming available if his team loses on Sunday. I'll give you one coach that might not be available if they lose. Who's okay. that? It's going to be the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. How about Austin Eckler? Did you see his comments? <laughs> no, I did not. Austin no. Eckler says, I don't have an opinion on Brandon Staley. When <laughs> asked his oh. opinion of, about Brandon Staley, he said, I don't have <laughs> hey, an man, opinion. Let me tell you something. Oh, you lose no. on Sunday night to the Chicago Bears nationally televised game. Two and five Chicago Bears at home, and you're the Chargers. Brandon Staley will be fired on Monday. I, I, I don't know how you keep him. If you lose that game to the Bears, I just don't know how. It's just just feels like that's the way it's going to go. Because that Chicago Bears team ain't good, and neither are you, Chargers. Nope. <laughs> Eckler says, I'm not spending one ounce of my energy thinking about how I feel because it doesn't matter. 
What matters is I have to go execute, and I don't feel like I did that at a high level. So he's trying to clarify, but <laughs> I don't have an opinion. I don't think that's how my head goes. <laughs> what oh. about Rams and Cowboys this weekend? I think that that's probably the most exciting, or should be at least. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The NFL has been so unpre- like unpredictable this year that I don't even know what to expect, but that is the only one that I think could be the most interesting this weekend. For me, it's going to be the Bengals and uh, 49ers. Mm. I, I like that game. I think that they are – the Bengals have – have uh, figured some things out. The Niners are are scuffling a little bit, losing a couple in a row. And so the Bengals are starting to – Joe Burrow is healthy. They're coming off of a bye week. And then you have the 49ers, Brock Purdy potentially out with a concussion. They lost to the Browns. They lost to the Vikings. Um, and so you could be potentially looking at three losses in a row if you're the San Francisco uh, 49ers. Yikes. Yeah, that it's would be bad. bad. By the way, where is Dallas and uh, the Rams this weekend? Is it uh, at SoFi or is it – uh, either way, I just hope, I hope there's two. Uh, both owners are in a box together, and I hope it, something happens to it. <laughs> it's uh, so, yes, it's in Dallas. Randy, you Brandy. can't say that out loud publicly. Oh, sorry. I, just in case. Just in case. Because they'll come looking well, here. You can't put a bounty on a guy. <laughs> I just did. No, it's, uh, here's what I, I just hope, you know, like their food is bad. And well, you know that food poisoning, yeah, the, <laughs> together, really bad. Even if it is at SoFi, it'll probably have more Dallas Cowboys fans. It's Let's that, be honest; it's in, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it's in, in Dallas. Dallas. No, okay. okay. Yeah, at Jerry's yeah, world. So it's a, yeah. I, that is one where I just, I don't know how I pick a team to root against. I really, well, okay, it's it's <laughs> it's by a smidgen, but the thing is, I don't think Cronky figures out to leave unless Jones tells him to. It's really a, uh, it's a conundrum for me. It's a dilemma. Which one's worse? Yeah. It is. They're both horrible. I if you know. had to choose one, Ooh. if you Ooh. had to choose one, Jerry or Stan, not to not to harm, to to spend a day with. Oh man, if this was Sophie's choice. You it would be had a- to choose one, like to Very spend a few movie. hours with and have a conversation with. And it has to be a oh, it'll be standard. cordial conversation. It'll be standard. It has to be. It has, yeah. to, be it has a nice to be cordial. Conversation. It has yeah. to be cordial. Is there going to be a moderate? It has to be cordial. A respectful conversation. Then it might be Jera. <laughs> Because I don't think I'm capable of it with Stanley. But you get you could also get AI Jerry Jones. Remember, oh, yeah, there's true. AI Jerry Good. Jones out that's there. That's a good point. Okay, so both of these guys are flailing in Ready? a lake, okay? Which and, one are you saving? And I have, like, one life preserver okay. that I can throw out to them. <laughs> oh you're, you're, you're sitting there. I'm just going to sit back on my lawn chair and enjoy the show. <laughs> oh I have something nice to say. Good luck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Wipe this, wipe this rock. We can't have this out there in the public, okay? Should we dig deeper? Just in case. The FBI is going to be looking at us now. uh, Yeah, FBI, we don't mean it. It's not going to happen. I'm never going to be close to those guys. Uh, Get your text into the Air Comfort Service text line. 314-399-9646. 314-399-YO-HO-4. Take it or leave it next on 101 ESPN.
Don't set it right back. Get your text in to 314-399-9646. And give us your take it or leave it. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Randy and Matthew, time for Take It or Leave It. Brooke, I'm sure you're aware of this, but I'm not sure the gentlemen in this room are, uh, uh, well, they aren't as evolved as you and I are. Uh, okay. So Kim K has this shapewear brand called uh, Skims. Oh, yes. Skims. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's worth $4 billion. It came out during the summer. It's and worth the, $4 billion? The, the shapewear brand is worth $4 billion. But yesterday, Skims for Men was released. Oh, yeah. And they had 25,000 orders in the first five minutes. Take it or leave it, Carrie and Matthew will both wind up buying skims. I'm going to leave skims that. Skims for men? Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't I'm even know. It. it doesn't even sound like something. I have no clue what this is. It's shapewear. I it's don't shapewear. know. It's shapewear. It's men's shapewear. I'm good. No. Nick, oh, I'm, Bosa, Nick Bosa is one of the models, I'm by the way. I'm wearing it by Christmas. Yeah, uh, really? Nick Bosa, does he need shapewear? <laughs> no, he doesn't. No. So, so yep. what, what, what? come on, man. Yeah, the skims <laughs> men's line. 100% <laughs> take it, Randy. 100% take it. I'm wearing it by Christmas. You might get some for Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. You You're absolutely no, 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 100%. Right. I, I've known about this for like five days because I got a text message and I was like, I don't know what I'm getting for Christmas now and I'm okay with it. It looks comfortable yeah. as hell. So women yeah, love no. it. I don't need, I gotta I'm see down. a video. Women I'm in. love it. I'm in. W- women love skims, but yesterday, I don't Google it. yesterday was the biggest day of selling skims since the brand launched. And uh, the steak shirt. that Kim K has <laughs> in it, <laughs> she's got a 35% steak. It has increased her net worth from $1.2 billion to $1.7 billion. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Congratulations. So you, she needs um, it. Matthew, she needs it, guys. Matthew is a yes and Carrie is a no. That's a hard no. I, okay. And I just showed no Carrie me, the, the <laughs> outfits he can get. Yeah. Lots I, of shirts. What is it? Shirts and I'm, underwear? I mean, there's a, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, there's a good chance I'm wearing one of these pairs before Thanksgiving break. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. I'll I'm pass. okay. <laughs> I don't, good I don't, for Kim. I don't think I, I don't want to do that. Um... <laughs> I didn't even know where I was going with this. <laughs> you threw me off, man. Right? <laughs> thanks for thanks for throwing in the Nick Bosa part to make it sporty. By the way, you're welcome. Kim's kind of sporty. She used to sell Sketchers. Well, she she and, did it. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, she yeah. Has athletes. I was gonna I was gonna list them off, but we'll just say athletes. Yeah, Reggie Bush, married to Chris Humphreys. Chris Humphreys. She was married to for seventy two days. That's because he wore and wound up wearing number seventy two the nice. next year. Wow. Good for him. So we, we were talking about basketball. Basketball season started a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. The Lakers are, they, they won one, they lost one. They they lost to the Nuggets opening night. They won versus the, uh, a team versus the, they won versus the Suns, a team that didn't have all of their players by five. Take it or leave it. The Lakers are actually the eighth or ninth best team in the West. I'll take that. Ooh. Yeah, they're, they're not like, unlike last year. I think they will be. And LeBron is already on a minutes restriction, which is, Intriguing to start the season. Well, he's what, 38? Why do you think that is? No, well, the age? 39. And he was know. hurt last year a lot. Yeah. I, he's Load supposed management. to be the one that, to, that, you know, doesn't miss time. He's a cyborg. But he's old. He's a machine. Well, he is, but old machines break down too, CD. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is true. All right, you're right. I'll okay. take it. Guys, it's kind of Halloween weekend. I think that most people celebrate Halloween this weekend, correct? And I know that mm-hmm. some kids will go trick or treating on Tuesday. Take it or leave it. M and M's is the best Halloween candy that you can get when going trick or treating. Brooke, M&Ms? no. I just I like the regular M and M's. The I'm little not, guys. Not that that. I don't look. Don't like M and M's. I do. I love them, but Reese's exist. Okay. Reese's peanut butter cups exist. If it's specifically the pumpkin ones, I love the pumpkin Best ones. Best chocolate to peanut butter ratio aside from the bunny. The the one pound bunny, the chocolate to peanut I, butter ratio is spectacular. So Snickers isn't on your list? It's on my list, but not number one. Yeah. For I me, wouldn't I wouldn't peanut buy peanut M&M's is number one for me. Yes. Yeah. Peanut, yeah. M&Ms. Like peanut butter yeah. M&M's? No. I don't. Um Sometimes I have to be in the mood specifically. I like it at movie theaters specifically. Peanut butter M and M's are better than Reese's Pieces. Do we? uh, Shame on you. Are we doing chocolate (laughs) and (laughs) peanut butter? (laughs) Wait, repeat that again. Peanut butter M and M's are better than Reese's Pieces. No, because because the balance of chocolate and peanut butter is better on a on a, the M&M because there's the chocolate coating. Reese's Pieces doesn't have as good of a chocolate no. coating. 
Thank uh, you, Randy. No. Yep, totally 100% I, right. I, no. I, no. Yeah. No. I'll um, leave it. By the way. Halloween candy is very expensive. I, I say this because I went and bought Halloween candy last night. Uh-huh. And I, I remember myself as a kid, and I, I wanted the best candy. So I was like, okay, I got to get the best stuff. You know, the, the variety pack that has Butterfingers, everything in it. I was like, this is... Almost twenty dollars for mm-hmm. just this giant bag of candy. Our, oh my god! Our, our house is popular. Corn? Yeah, yeah. Candy, candy corn? corn's oh. great. Candy corn's good. Oh, okay. Our house is popular because uh, we give out full size candy. Oh, you're oh. In that house. Yeah, yeah. Um, Big budget over there. Well, we just want to take care of ourselves. Um, <laughs> I don't need to have those little. Things. Uh, so Tuesday, Halloween Day, let's do a Halloween candy draft, and then we'll let people vote on it. But, uh, Brooke, uh, again, I, I'm a huge fan of M&M's. Huge fan. But Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are where it's at. Mm. Or Peanut Butter Pumpkins. Or I like the Peanut crunch. Butter Christmas trees. Oh, it's a little crunch. crunch is, I, like the, I don't, I don't yeah. dislike the crunch. There you go. Uh, okay. I, I, can, I can, like, pretty much... All of those. Uh, okay. People are calling me boring now. Come no. on, guys. I just like consistency. Consist- and it's good. It's consistently good. Okay. I enjoy it. Almond Joy has nuts. Mounds don't. I'm an Almond Joy guy. What about I you? Like I don't Joy. like either one of them. Really? really? No coconut? I am not a fan of coconut. I hate the... Uh, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, it's so good, no. though. It is no, really good. No, thank really you. Really good. You can keep it. Here's I the give thing. My, I like I'll all candy. All of it to you. No, you can have all of it. Yeah. yeah. No, you know what? I, I used to eat those... Um, those Chuck the uh, those candy peanut things, but the the marshmallow peanut things they're gross. You don't you don't like those. What are, what are the uh, orange and black things that they give out? Mary Janes. You don't like those. I promise you, you don't. Okay, uh, Matthew, no, number one, put that. That's the most important thing we got next week. Is that that that's most our most important, important thing? Tuesday. Yes, sir. Uh, what Maybe do you, the Cardinals announced something, but you know will, we got to get this in. Yeah, right. That's it. <laughs> It'll be more important. I will go ahead and just ignore any in response to the Jake Odorizzi ask. Uh, oh. take it, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, yeah. <laughs> take, it, take it or leave it. Craig Council is the perfect candidate for the Astros job. Ooh, I. that's a great one. Hmm. You know, I'm going to take that. That is a good play. It is. Think so? Yeah. Uh, he is a perfect candidate. I think he's going to the Mets. That's what it seems like, right? Yeah, he was with David Stearns. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's... Uh, if he has a connection to the Houston, new Houston general manager, I forgot the new Houston general manager's name. Click is the guy they fired. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, I, I would think that with that group of players and with the way that council conducts his business, that would be a good spot for him. Take it or leave it. Basketball players should be allowed to go straight from high school, but that should never be an option for football players. Oh, it's not. And, and I'll I, take it. I'll take it. Uh, Have you ever seen a, a, an 18-year-old who could go play in the NFL? No. No. Maybe a receiver. Okay. Maybe. Quarterback? I think Herschel Maybe. could have. Um, Bo? I don't think a quarterback. Running is too hard, man. Like, it, it, it's hard enough going to college and playing against, when you're 18, playing against 22-year-olds. Like, that's a different, it's just a different animal. Those guys are bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, it, it takes a year or two for your body to mature to be to the level now at 20 years old two years i don't know if it has to necessarily be three i think two years you could you could potentially do it but not fresh out of high school no way let's see how big hershel walker as a freshman i think was like six two and 225 yeah um he was (laughs) a freshman that's insane he he was unbelievable you know who else was uh and he didn't wind up having much of an nfl career because he got hurt uh, marcus dupree at oklahoma oh yeah yeah there's a great uh 30 for 30 on marcus dupree yeah i heard about him Take it or leave it. Candy corn is the worst Halloween candy. Take it. Hmm. If you choose, if you <laughs> listen to me, I'm going to. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. If you go. go to the store and you actually choose candy corn no, out of all does. of the right. options, I got to stay the hell away from me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you steer clear of me, buddy. I don't want any problems. What, what is it? Is it just that it's like too what, plain? What is it's wax. It? It's, it's I, wax. That's a good what, what is, is it? it? <laughs> what is what it? Is you tell me corn? what it is, and then I'll tell you why I don't Wait, like. That's I don't a fantastic know what it is. question. I've never thought about this, but what exactly is it? Yeah, I, it, it's. <laughs> what, about, what about the little pumpkins that are made out of the same stuff? I don't know. Thank you. I'm telling you, those, those Mary okay. Janes are like licorice. Oh, Bitto honey. Bitto honey are terrible. I don't want any parts of it. Honey, so, sugar, butter, yeah. and vanilla? Uh, honey, okay. sugar, butter, and vanilla? Is what it's based, flavor-based. So this is all very artificial that you're getting in the candy corn. And wax. Yep. 
Yeah. Mary Janes are made out of peanut butter and molasses. Uh, the only time people under the age of 70 use the word molasses <laughs> is to describe something very slow. <laughs> like how long it takes to eat one of these. I don't even, yeah, I don't even know if maybe people use that. The anyway. description here on the interwebs. Uh, Mary Jane is not a candy. It's a disappointment in a yellow and red wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, any, wait, you got one more good one? Yes, this is actually good. I never thought about this before. Take it or leave it. Giving out beer slash airplane shots to the parents during trick-or-treating oh. is the best thing to do. Yeah, I, would, I never yes. even thought about that. In my neighborhood, the, the, the parents get That's alcohol. Genius. They, give, they give you beer or give okay. you a shot. You, you, really? Oh, yeah. That's nice. That's genius. If you're walking around with those kids for an hour, hell yeah, you need a drink. Yeah. Kids I'm running out in the street. That. Stop, slow down. It's cars. <laughs> the amount of stress associated with kids running off in the middle of the night. Yeah. Get those parents a beverage. <laughs> Can somebody explain to me the jokes here in St. Louis? So it's a tradition here where you're supposed to tell a joke, right? When a you trick, go trick or, or treat. Or, trick or a treat. Okay. So like what? It just it doesn't matter. Any yeah, joke? joke? Any joke. Yeah. This oh, okay. is the Midwest, Brooke, right? We're not just giving out candy for free to kids. This is a murder. Oh, okay. Putting Excuse a, me. Put in a little sorry. work. <laughs> Sorry. Murder, so if it's a yeah. bad yeah. joke, then you give them candy corn. If it's a good joke, yeah, then you give them that's a good idea. Give some good listen, candy. jelly beans. Listen, there's an aspect. You you give certain people good enough jokes, and they will give you a bigger handful of candy. And so there's an incentive there. You got to come is. up with a good one. You can't just you can't just saunter up there with an old Bloodweiser joke. It's tired. Think deeper. Use the internet. Okay. Well, you heard that, kids. Do yeah. better. Do, kids do better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> Randy, yes. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Are you? What are you gonna say? Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. So I go up to the door and say oh, trick no. or treat, and they say, "What's your trick?" And I say, "A guy walks into a bar, and he's disqualified from the limbo contest." <laughs> It's, it's short, it's simple, and you know what? It's unexpected. That's what I appreciate. About it. It's when, all of that. When, when vegans get into an argument, is it still called a beef? Oh, oh my God. Okay. Just wondering. Oh, man. That, that one might get candy corn. Okay, good. Uh, Coming up, come up next on 101 ESPN, the World Series begins tonight in uh, Arlington, Texas. And we've got our predictions for you next on 101 ESPN.
perspective on the day's top stories. It's the opening drive's fresh take. Six time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler, Brooke Grimsley, Kerry Davis, Randy Carricker, and the World Series starts tonight in Arlington, Texas. The Rangers taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, to get to the World Series, the Diamondbacks had to win the last two games of the NLCS in Philadelphia. Before those two games, Chris Mad Dog Russo said that if the Diamondbacks advanced to the World Series that he would retire. Now he has backed off that really? statement. The manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Tori Lavolo, none too happy that Mad Dog isn't being held accountable here. Stephen A. Smith, you're my boy. You're my boy. And I need you to hold him accountable, okay? I need you to keep going at him every single day. Don't let it stop. Um, but a deal's a deal. I agree. Like, you gotta, you can't back out of that one, Mad Dog. You gotta do something. I don't know if you're talking about TV, radio, but I do like Howard Stern's thought about walking with a billboard saying that I am, um, whatever, a liar and an a-hole in Midtown Manhattan for half a day. That'll do it for me, but I ain't gonna forgive you until you do something unbelievable. Maybe show up here and say you're sorry to the entire team. I like it all. I, I love it all. One of them. You got to do something, man. You can't just <laughs> pretend like you didn't say this and, and no. like it never happened. There's video evidence of it. I know for some people that didn't matter. But for most of us Americans, it matters when you say stuff and people pay attention. So Now, yeah. what's interesting about this World Series is that both teams think that they're the underdog and they're both looking for the Michael Jordan Memorial chip on the shoulder. Here's Lavolo. At the end of the day, we're all internally motivated. Like, we should be. It's our job to come here and stay motivated and stay focused. And I don't think we need extra. But when you get extra, it's like a glass of iced tea. You add a little bit of honey and a little bit of lemon to it. It tastes perfect. So, um, yeah, when we hear those things, they're out there. The social media makes it happen really quick. And it's really my friends and my family that are dropping it in my lap because I don't necessarily, I'm not on social media. I don't read that type of stuff, but I find it entertaining. I get to it. Um, and we just, we put it on our, our list and keep those receipts and walk around a little bit more of a chip on our shoulder. And it gives you a little bit more, um, more motivation. And when you can you get a little bit more, you, you take it. And some of those things do really bother me because nobody knows the magic that's sitting inside of that clubhouse right now. Nobody knows what we're capable of doing on a daily basis. Nobody knows how hard we're working to make today happen. And hopefully people start to respect this ball club. They better because we're here and it's real. Okay, so hopefully people will start to respect this ball club. That's the Diamondbacks manager. Here is the manager of their opponent, the Rangers. We really didn't talk about it. We we weren't concerned with what people thought of us. You know, we... We thought we were good. We, we thought we belonged, and, and we thought we could win, and that's how we looked at it. So didn't really get concerned with, you know, what the outside or the big pundits or experts thought about us, and so that's how we approached it. So both teams don't really care. Uh, well, one does. One uses it as motivation. Bruce Bochy and the, the Rangers not bothered by the idea of being an underdog. I don't think that they are the underdog. I mean, based on their team and, and how well they played and how well, I mean, they, they led all offensive statistics in, in pretty mm -hmm. much everything. I, <laughs> I don't know how that would make one an underdog. And they probably have the better pitching staff, the better betting, better starting pitcher. So, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know how you would be considered, bless you, I don't know how was you he, would was be considered. Was that an actual sneeze? <laughs> it was, it was, I, I, I actually... Um, I was able to condense it, though, and make it just one big sneeze turned into one little one. Uh, it wasn't a cough no, that it, sounded it like a cough. sneeze? No. Apparently, I'm not good at coughing, and that's yeah. a whole side of yeah. conversation we, that we've been having. Every time so. you cough, we say yeah. bless you, because we don't know. Yeah, the Rangers uh, minus 170 to win it all. The Diamondbacks are plus 145. Yeah, I think the Diamondbacks are actually the underdog, mm -hmm. and I think the Rangers are not. But whatever you got to tell yourself to, um, you know, give you some motivation, give you some, some type of juice. <laughs> Bless you. To keep yourself going forward. <laughs> Brooke, can't, Brooke can't stop laughing. <laughs> no, I, yeah, everything's fine. Oh, yeah, I, and, the Rangers this is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm so, so sorry, CD. Okay. No, the, that moment, it was accidental because I was drinking my coffee and it went down the wrong pipe. That is the worst feeling on earth. But okay. I think you're right. And sometimes you have to manufacture it, right? Like where yes. that edge, that feeling. I think maybe 
maybe some people didn't think that the Rangers would be able to beat the Astros in that way. And then with the Diamondbacks, I do think they're the underdog. But can you say anybody's truly the underdog when you make it all the way to the World Series? And the Diamondbacks, the teams that they beat to get here, I think you should take them very seriously. Yeah. There are five former Cardinals in the series, about 10% of the players on both rosters. Adolis Garcia, Jordan Montgomery, Chris Stratton, Tommy Pham, Zach Gallen, who, by the way, starts game one for Arizona. The most important former Cardinal in the series is Brooke. Fill in the blank. The most important former, former Cardinal. Cardinal in the series. Uh, I, it has to be Montgomery or Garcia, right? And I know that you have Gallon as a part of that mm-hmm. conversation, of course. Uh, Garcia has just been on such a tear, and I feel like when he really gets going, obviously he can do a lot, and the offense is going for the Rangers too. I might have to say Garcia in this situation. Yeah, I'm going to go Garcia as well. ALS, ALCS MVP. Uh, Played outstanding, mm-hmm. you know, hit so many home runs, had drove in so many runs in that series. Uh, you gotta, you gotta think that he's going to be the guy um, when he's hitting the ball. They are, they are tough to beat. I think that the Rangers can win the World Series if Adolis Garcia is not performing well. I think the Rangers can win the World Series even if Jordan Montgomery isn't performing at a high level. I don't think the Diamondbacks can win if Zach Gallen doesn't perform well. Mm -hmm. I think Zach Gallen needs to win both of his starts if they're going to win. So I'm going to put Zach Gallen as my most important former Cardinal in the series. Breakout player. Somebody that maybe didn't have a huge LCS or hasn't had a huge playoff yet, but has the opportunity and the ability to be that guy. Well, that's kind of tough because I feel like there's been so many different players on both sides that you can could consider breakout in at this point. And they were making an impact. But I have to say for the Rangers, for me, it's going to be Evan Carter, young rookie, the way that he's impacted things. And I know that he's been a part, obviously, of the success up until this point, especially in postseason play. But I think for him to continue what he's doing, I can see him being the Rangers breakout star. On the other side, I think Ginkle for the Diamondbacks. He looked really good. He looked really good. I think he's important to their success. But you could also put LeClerc for the Rangers in this conversation, too. Mm -hmm. He was he was outstanding minus that what was the game five or what's the right. game five the back to back game when L2 be the one I think other than that he was he was outstanding. Uh can can this person be a breakout star? Can can Max Scherzer be on that list seeing how he oh, did in, in this postseason yeah. because he didn't because he was dealing with an injury uh you know didn't perform particularly I, I would say up to his standards um in the uh, ALCS, I would say Max Scherzer, and then I'm gonna say uh, for the for the Diamondbacks, what about Gabriel Moreno? That's my guy. Ooh. He is yeah. the, the catcher. He's mm-hmm. done a he's done a fantastic job. Did a fantastic job in the in the NLCS and, and has done a great job all throughout the playoffs. That's gonna be my guy. Yeah, I think that he'll probably make his name known on the national yes. stage because you really in the in the LCS. Uh, you, you don't when you're on FS1 or, or TBS, you don't get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. But now I'm big box on the World Series. I'm with you with uh, with Gabriel Marino. And there's a, a guy who was he was an all star. But I'm going to go with the other catcher, Jonah Heim for Texas. He's a really good player. Yeah. And I could see him having a big series and being an important part of what the uh, the Rangers do in this World Series. OK, MVP of the World Series. Nathan Avaldi for the Rangers. Ooh, nice call. That is where I'm going with that. I have a bold prediction, and this kind of plays into our your next question. So I'm gonna have to kind of give this away to play into the point of why I think that he'll be the MVP. I think it's gonna be Nathan Avaldi. I can see him making two starts in this series because I believe this will go into a game seven. Maybe personally, I just wanted to go into a game seven. And I also think that you might see him coming out of the bullpen at some point. He's, it has happened. Yeah, I, I think the easy answer would be Adolis Garcia. I think that he's just hitting the ball the way in which he did. It's probably going to continue. And that would be my pick. There's a guy that's already done it before. I'm going with Corey Seager. Mm. He's a mm-hmm. big time player. He's a bright lights player. So I, believe that the Rangers shortstop will step up. And then finally, who wins the World Series? What team and in how many games? I've been saying this for weeks. I think it's going to be the Rangers. I, I've been saying that the Rangers are going to win the World Series. I think that they have the best overall roster to do it. A nice balance of strong veterans. I think, CD, to your point, Max Scherzer is going to do a lot better than we saw him in the, those last two starts. I think there's going to be a lot of things that come together. I do think that it will go to a Game 7, but it's going to be the Rangers for me. They're going to win it all. I'm going to go Rangers, but I'm going to go in six. Hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, if the Diamondbacks win the World Series, I will eventually retire. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Eventually. 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 Oh, gotcha. You. you see, okay. that's what he should have done. Mm-hmm. Is not to he, exactly he, put like a time stamp he, he on did. it. He messed it up. <laughs> I am with you guys, though. I think this one goes seven, and I think the home team wins every game, and I think mm-hmm. the Rangers win game seven. Mm-hmm. So, wow. There you have it. That is our fresh take here on 101 ESPN. Next up, the Blues won 3-0 last night in Calgary. They take on Van Blank and Coover tonight. How did the Blues line changes work? That's next on 101 ESPN. This year is the 60th anniversary of Metro Transit here in St. Louis. Of course, we've had Metrolink for the last number of years, but we've had the the Metro bus system and Metro transportation for 60 years now. And Metro doesn't just help people get from point A to point B. It helps people in our region get the kind of better paying jobs that get them ahead. People need to get to their jobs. And the biggest and brightest regions have great public transportation. And we have it here in St. Louis. A healthy Metro is vital to the viability of our region to try to attract more Fortune 500 companies. That's what those sorts of companies look for. The ability to get to work, the ability to avoid traffic, the ability to cut down on the carbon footprint that we make. If you want to support our community, Riding Metro supports local businesses and helps reduce that traffic congestion. It can make all the difference in the world, whether it's to a sporting event, or to your job on a daily basis, whether you use it or not, Metro is important. In short, thanks to Metro, you don't have to drive to thrive.
101 ESPN. I'm, I mostly use uh, Shen's line on, uh, you know, a second go around with the three different players, and it seemed to work well. And I thought Bortz added a spark for our team tonight, um, getting involved physically and just doing little things he does. And Prune was fine for me, you know, moving the puck and did some things. Didn't get a ton of power play time, but, <clears throat> you know, he did some good things out there. That's uh, Chief Craig Berube. You gotta come up with a better big nickname for Scott Prune. Prune. It, it, yeah. Like Prune. A, yeah. Prune. Prunes. Prune. Yeah. So Isn't Rooney. That, yeah. Rooney. 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 Prune. Prunes is Scotty. just yeah. yeah. We gotta have something. The Blues did win last night, three nil, <laughs> and there were some uh, new look lines. First of all, Jakub Verana did not play, as Chief mentioned. Both Robert Bortuzzo and Perun were in the lineup. So you had Thomas with Kairu and Saad, your number one line, but and Pavel Buchnevich is back. He was with Shen and Kapanen. That group had a really good game. Hayes was between Neighbors and Toropchenko. And I thought, I, I think Hayes can bring the best out of Neighbors. Although I would like to see something different with that line. I'd ultimately like, ultimately like to see Verano there. And then Sunquist and Blay were the other forwards. What they did worked. The Blues had more offensive zone time last night than they've had all year long. They outshot the opponents for the first time all year. And my anticipation would be that that'll be the same lineup tonight in Vancouver. It worked out. Last night, you were talking about Ozog time because we've been talking about that a lot. And Jeremy Rutherford mentioned and broke down the numbers with it. Last night, they spent 45% of their time in the Ozone. It was a huge difference from the eye test, but just to see those numbers line up with it, it made a lot of sense. And you talked about the Thomas line. I thought Robert Thomas looked great last night. That Thomas line looked fantastic. He finished the game with an assist and was plus one the game, and he outshot the Flames himself six to one. That line in general outshot them nine to one. And it just felt like they really, from the start of the game, were very aggressive, really got in on the four checks, several great bat checks from all the players involved, and it was a great defense effort too. I thought they did outstanding. I, I, I would hope that you know it doesn't require someone getting benched or sat down to, mm -hmm. to light a flame or a fire under this team. I, I hope that they have that same energy tonight because what we've seen this season is good game, bad game, good game, bad game, you know, lackluster effort. Oh, they got a lot of effort tonight. I, they need to be consistent in the on the side of having effort every single night. And yesterday, you could tell from the, the moment the puck dropped in the first period that they had more energy than they had in the previous game. And I don't know what this roller coaster, these peaks and valleys that they have, I don't understand it. I don't know where it come fr comes from. If it happens again tonight, you will know that it is truly, you know, who they are at this mm -hmm. point. But if they have the same energy and, and, and are skating with, it felt like they were skating with purpose and intent yet last night. And they were actually getting to it, getting after it. Um, and it, 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 boded well for them. They won the game. They outshot their opponent for the first time. They were actually shooting the puck. Um, there was a couple of things that I mean, Robert Thomas missed a goal, missed it. He took a shot and missed it. I didn't like his body language. He does that a lot, I think, mm -hmm. when he doesn't score on opportunities where I think he thinks he should score. You kind of see him sulk and like, oh, well, mm -hmm. here we go. I don't like that. I, it happens, man. They, they get paid, too. So you're not going to hit every shot, even if it's an open net. Sometimes you're going to miss it, even the ones you think you should make. Those things I think could be corrected body language and how you you know go about your 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 business day to day but yesterday was a really good game now can you do it again because that's what good teams do they are consistent in their effort and their energy every single night I'm going to say this with the full understanding that you have to earn your spot in the lineup but if you're a team where your president of hockey operations is saying I hope we can finish third in the division and you have a guy that in my opinion is noticeable every time he plays why not get Scott Perunovich ready to be a good player when you're ready to win? At, at some point, the guy's going to have to play, right? Why not get him reps? Mm -hmm. And whether that's at the expense of, of Krug, who, by the way, has he's been all right. 
But Krug, Krug looked pretty good last I, I night. I thought he looked really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he definitely, it was such much, it was more of a physical game last night. Mm -hmm. I thought Krug was a part of that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I would just like to, last night was Scott Perunovich's first game of the season. Yes. I need to see more of him mm -hmm. because if you're going to make all this investment, I mean, the, the guy has missed, what, three full seasons because of injuries. Mm -hmm. At some point, you got to find out whether or not he can be a guy for you when you're ready to win. So that's one aspect to this, and I don't mind them sitting Verona. But I also think Verona needs reps. And once he's motivated and ready to go and doesn't bother the coach, that's another guy I want to see not only be dressed but get significant minutes <clears throat> to find out whether or not he can be because he's got the skill, but can he be a key part of a team that's ready to win? Can we talk about Colton Pareko as well? Yeah. Uh, we have to. I mean, as much as we were on him last season and, and how poorly it looked, he, he looks different this year. He looks more energetic. He looks... He's taking shots. Like it's, he's not turning down shots. He's he's actually shooting mm -hmm. the puck, and he's skating. He's doing the things that he was not doing last year, and, you know, that's something that this team needed. Your best players have to be the best players every night, and you don't get to – when you are, are, are being paid at a level, you don't get to take nights off. You don't get to say, oh, I don't feel it. I don't got it. To, no, you got to have it because everyone else is depending on you to have it. So I thought he did a great job last night as well. This is where we're seeing a healthy and confident Colton. Pareko and it's paying off. This is what the Blues wanted. He's not meant to be Chris Pronger. He's not going to have that extreme mean streak, but he is a really good defenseman, and I think we're seeing a fully healthy and more competent Colton Pareko. You talk about the defensemen. You saw them get more involved, especially in last night's game. If you look at even at that Nick Letty goal, because the forwards are moving the puck back to the point, then they're getting to the net from more. That was something that just really set up that whole situation well, is them getting more involved in things. I really liked a lot of the aspects of it. But you mentioned Verona and how that panned out. Tyler Tucker was also the mm -hmm. one that was benched in this process, too. Baruby, when asked about Verona prior to the game about why he was benched, he said, we need more from him. It's all honest play on the ice, and he's got to be better. I think it was not only to send a message to Verona because of what happened in the third period in that Winnipeg game, but also to the rest of the team that we're going to start doing. Baruby has done this throughout mm -hmm. his time here where he'll bench certain players to send a message to the team, and I thought it was a great response by the team and by Baruby, too for that whole performance that you saw last night. And the Blues are at Vancouver tonight. 8 o'clock pregame, 9 o'clock faceoff with Curbs and Joey here on your home of the Blues, 101 ESPN. Coming up, we've got the fight. Stick around. It's coming your way next.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues last night with a 3 0 win over the Calgary Flames. Game three in their Ford game road trip tonight in Vancouver. It's a 9 p.m. puck drop, which means you can catch the pregame show right here on 101 ESPN starting at 8 p.m. Also, last night it was the Bills over the Buccaneers in Thursday night football. And coming up this weekend, St. Louis City hosts their first ever playoff game and they host Sporting Kansas City. It'll be a 9 p.m. start for that game. Brought to you by, this is your Sports Center update, brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Really? Welcome back to the opening drive. I'm Kerry Davis, joined by Brooke Grimsley, and it is time for the fight. And our fighter for the second day is Dwayne. Dwayne, how you doing? Good. All right, you ready to take on Randy Carricker again? Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> Best of luck to you. When the Browns were reconstituted before the 1999 season, who was their first draft pick? Was it Courtney Brown, Gerard Warren, or Tim Couch? Uh... Tim Couch. Who are the current reigning MLS Cup champions? Is it the Philadelphia Union, LAFC, or Seattle Sounders? LAFC. On this day in 2013, the Red Sox finished off their World Series win with a pickoff of Colton Wong. Who was Wong pinch running for? Was it Matt Holliday, Lance Berkman, or Alan Craig? I'll go Lance Berkman. Happy birthday to former Cardinals pitcher Pete Vukovic. What was the last name of the fictional Yankee, Yankee slugger that Vukovic portrayed in the 1989 classic Major League? Was it Howard, Haywood, or Hendricks? Uh, I'll go Haywood. All right, we'll double check our score and bring in Randy Carricker. All right, Dwayne, how you feel? I feel all right, but after Rocky uh, pitched a no hitter on uh, Randy yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> he did throw a no hitter. Uh, that was. Uh, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen again. Yeah, well, we'll see. You, yesterday you didn't feel great, and today you feel a little bit better. So we'll see how it goes. Randy okay. is. Uh, <laughs> doing his best Eli Drinkowitz impersonation. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> How are you doing? Say hello, Dwayne. Say hello to Dwayne, Randy. Dwayne, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right, Randy, here we go. All right. When the Browns, when the Browns, when the Browns were reconstituted before the 1999 season, who was their first pick? Hmm. Who was their, uh, their first <clears throat> pick? Um, I remember Ty Detmer was their quarterback. You know, they could have had Kurt Warner. He was left unprotected really? by the St. Louis Rams, and uh, Cleveland didn't select him because they planned on Kentucky's Tim Couch being uh, their quarterback, I believe. Who are the current reigning MLS Cup champions? Uh, I think f the Philadelphia Union lost last year. Um to, uh, I think, LAFC. Final answer? LA FC. Yeah, I'll go right. with that. I'll go with that. On this day in 2013, the Red Sox finished off their World Series win with a pickoff of Colton Wong. Who was Wong pinch running for? I don't think... I don't think Alan Craig could run anymore at that point. And I believe it was uh, Alan Craig who reached base and then just was, he could not run anymore. So I, I think it was uh, Wonger getting picked off trying to run for Craig. Final question. Happy birthday to former Cardinals pitcher Pete Vukovic. What was the last name of the fictional Yankee slugger that Vukovic portrayed in the 1989 classic Major League? He was the first baseman. Um... 
I'll do the lifeline. I know it, but I just don't know it. So I, I, I don't want to take the time to think about it. Okay. <laughs> Howard, Haywood, or Hendrix? Haywood. Our streak of close fights continues. Just one question separating the champion of this fight. Does Dwayne roll on over a weekend into a Hall of Fame opportunity on Monday morning? That's a lot of weekend with a lot of studying. I'll tell you that right mm. now. Or does Megamind get to walk off into the sunset of another week with a victory? Ring that bell. Crazy, folks. Go crazy. The winner and still champion of the fight, Randy Carricker. Well done. Thank you. Great job, Dwayne. Or great job, Randy. Excuse me. You, you pushed uh, Randy pretty far. You fell four to three in this fight. I should have remembered that Alan Craig would have that bad ankle. Yeah. Yep, that's 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 kind of the, the linchpin that seals it for you. That was, in fact, the one that you got wrong. Let's go through those questions and answers. When the Browns were reconstituted before the 1999 season, it was, in fact, Tim Couch, the quarterback, and that worked out really well for him, right? Uh, Set yeah. him on a strong course right to win in from the get-go, right, Gary? Okay. One of the things uh, that you should probably do when you draft a quarterback number one is try to build an offensive line. And I usually put him in at halftime of their opener and their offensive line sucked and he was never. And he had come out of uh, that uh, Kentucky air raid offense and he never had a chance to learn how to be a pro. I mean, it worked so well for Achilles Smith. What did, yeah, did right. Not, there you how, go. how did you not expect? Did you not expect it to work out with right. with him? Come on now. Yeah. Uh, who are the current reigning MLS Cup champions? It was in fact the Union who fell to them. They went three to three, and then they lost three zero in penalties to LAFC, who said he may have to face later on in these playoffs. Mm-hmm. On this day in 2013, it was in fact Alan Craig who had gotten to first base, and again he couldn't run anymore. And so Colton Wong came in to pinch run, and then of course I think we all remember Colton Wong's uh, post game presser afterwards, which was the saddest right. thing I've ever That's freaking so seen. Sad. The yeah. saddest thing I've ever ever seen. Happy birthday to former Cardinal pitcher Pete Vukovic. What was the last name of the fictional Yankee slugger that Vukovic portrayed in the 1989 Classic Major League? It was, in fact, Haywood. Researching this question, I swear to God at one point, Euchre says his first name is Cleet, but he is not listed as that, and I could not find it anywhere like on the internet, but I, in my for? mind, it's not I listed on IMDb was, or anything. I thought it was Cleet. I thought it was Cleet. I could not find the line from Ooh. Euchre. I could not find it on the Wikipedia. I yeah. think I've Mandela-affected myself that he has a first name, because <laughs> everywhere on the internet, it's just Haywood. But anyway, a 4-3 win for Randy Carricker in today's fight. Dwayne, thank you so much for joining the fight and joining the show over the last two days. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Have a lovely weekend. Good to have you with us on 101 ESPN. Next up, we've got the Rush Hour Reset, and then at the top of the hour, Roman Berkey, the goaler for St. Louis City SC. The Rush Hour Reset next on 101 ESPN.
Hey, if you're going shopping this weekend, I want you to go to Schnooks, and I want you to download the Schnooks Rewards app before you go in. If you haven't already downloaded the Schnooks Rewards app and joined the program, you need to. Here's why. You get 2% back on everything that you purchase at Schnooks, and you get to take advantage of great farm fresh food. When you walk through the door and you see that produce department, they are as close to farm to table as you can get when you go to Schnooks. They have the best bakeries in town. Want to get a cookie cake for maybe you're watching the Blues game or the World Series? Get a cookie cake. It's the best cookie cake you'll ever have from Schnooks. Wonderful butchers and spectacular food throughout the store. And everything else that you need. And the cool thing about the Schnooks Rewards app, from my perspective personally, is that I can plug my list in and then walk the store. And it's really easy because they're going to basically give me a roadmap to make my shopping experience as efficient as it can possibly be. When you're out shopping this weekend and you're getting ready to do your shopping, make sure you download the Schnooks Rewards app before you stop by Schnooks. Time for the Rush Hour Reset. Blues winners last night in Calgary, 3-0, and the Blues will be at Vancouver tonight. The World Series also starts tonight just after 7 on Fox. It's the Texas Rangers and Nathan Ivaldi hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks and their young, well, he's not super young now, but uh, former Cardinal right-hander Zach Gallen, and that's game one. That should be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens here. I still think that the Rangers are going to win it all, but mm -hmm. I don't think you can consider the Diamondbacks. I know that they say that they're the underdogs. It's I don't madness. think anybody is the underdog in this situation and can make a claim to that because you got to this point, and they're both really, really good teams. And especially when you look at how Arizona got to this point with the back-to-back -back wins in beat. Philadelphia. Yeah. So, beat yeah, the, the Brewers, beat the Dodgers. Yeah. And uh, the, the Rangers might win. You know, 12 years ago tonight, they thought they were going to win the what World happened? Series. Well, they were up 7-5 okay. heading into uh, the, the bottom of the ninth Ooh, CD. Okay. And uh, what happened was a couple of runners reached base and the St. Louis and David Freeze tripled Ooh. them home to tie the game wow. at seven apiece and send it to extra innings. Lo and behold, bad things happened. Josh Hamilton with the two-run homer to make it 9-7 as we head to the bottom of the tenth. And uh, this is one of the most unbelievable and un. Uh, un underreported and underremembered parts of the best World Series game ever is it against a left-hander who's tough on lefties, Darren Oliver. Daniel Descalso led off with a base hit. John Jay followed with a base hit. Kyle Loesch pinch hits and bunts the runners over. In a World Series game, <laughs> the Cardinals bunt the runners over. Ryan Terrio grounds out to score one. One uh, a hitter later, after Albert Pujols had been intentionally walked, Lance Berkman stepped in. Now, Freeze had been a strike away from striking out and Texas being the world champions. Berkman is at the same point in the 10th inning. In the air to right center. This game is tied. They just... 9-9. Nine, nine. They just wouldn't go away. Jake Westbrook comes on. He allows a base hit, but is able to get out of the top of the 11th. And that took us in a tie game to the bottom of the 11th. And David Freeze was the leadoff hitter. Freeze hits it in the air to center. We will see you tomorrow night. Greatest World Series game ever. CD is getting goosebumps, oh, <laughs> and your memories are so vivid. Everybody's <laughs> memories are so vivid of that. It, they are. I was. I was telling you all. I was living in LA at the time. I was acting, so we had a, actually had an acting class. So I was not 
watching the game, but I remember coming out of class and my phone just ringing, ringing. It's my dad. He's calling me. My dad was the hugest. He loved the St. Louis Cardinals, and he's screaming in the phone. I'm like, what are you? Are you watching this game? You got to go find And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, free just hit the home run. You got to go And I'm like, okay. So I ran across the street, and I'm looking. It was a bar across the street, and I, I look inside. I'm watching, and I see the TV, and I'm like, oh, my God. This is absolutely amazing. It was spectacular for the Cardinals to, to be down. As you said, they just won't go away. They did not, and, and you get the home run by David Freeze, and that was, you know, it, it gives you chills hearing that call because that was a spectacular moment in St. Louis Cardinal history. And to have that moment with your father, yes. too, is mm-hmm. just so special, right? Because that's what sports is all about, yep. is having that special connection with not only family members, but just even strangers in that moment, yes. celebrating and all that stuff. What what was your father feeling after they won it? He was, I mean, my dad, we, we sat, so we went to the, was it 05 game when Jim Edmonds made that mm-hmm. catch in the NLCS? 06. Oh, 06. And we, oh, watched, I'm sorry. Oh, was it 05? No, it, it was the 04. 04. Yeah. It, it was yeah. one of those. He, when 04, he made the, in, 04 in game center field here. It was, it was amazing. So we, we loved Cardinal baseball. He loved Cardinal baseball. And just when that happened, when that, when they won that World Series, man, he, he's just, he was a Cardinal lifer and just wanted to hear, see, be a part of all of it. And he loved the game. He loved watching the Cardinals baseball. He loved watching them play, winning championships. It was a, it was a special moment for him. And you know what? Speaking of being with your father, Jack Buck had been dead for nine years at that point. And he had used that exact same line when Kirby Puckett hit a home run in game six of the 1991 World Series against Atlanta. We will see you tomorrow night. Everything sets up perfectly with Joe being at home with the team that he grew up around with another St. Louisan like Joe at the plate. And the the situation couldn't have been any more perfect. It's like serendipity that he was able to use that exact same call that his dad had used in 1991 and he used it 20 years later and that's why you get chills yep. when you hear that moment when you hear him saying that so take me back obviously i wasn't here take me back randy to what the feeling was like here in st louis people were leaving the ballpark well first of all yeah keep in mind that people were leaving the ballpark a lot of people left the ballpark when it was seven five going into the ninth but uh you have never seen a scene like that and this includes winning the world series at home in 82 this includes the rams winning the nfc championship in 2000 uh, or in 1999 big home wins it's the craziest that st louis has ever been after a home victory ever it was unbelievable outside that ballpark it was amazing I could only imagine. Yeah. Just and a I, sea of red celebrating. Right. And I don't know if we can ever get back to that point. I don't I don't know that as a society and as sports fans we can ever experience that much glee as we experienced then. It was, I hope we can. It was amazing, man. It it was just listening, watching you know, experiencing those moments. That's what, as Brooke said, that's what sports are about. I mean, it brings people from all different backgrounds together. People that would never agree on anything can agree on something (laughs) sports-related. It's a beautiful thing, and I I love hearing that call. I love seeing how that moment was, and I love hearing all of the stories of people where they were when that moment happened. That's the coolest thing about yeah. it, is that everybody knows exactly where they yep. were and what they were doing. Everybody that was around for it knows exactly where they were and what they were doing. That's how our Rush Hour reset 12 years ago tonight. The greatest World Series game ever. Game 6 between the Cardinals and the Rangers. I kind of felt bad for Nolan Ryan, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Uh, Sorry, coming up next... As uh, we talk playoffs, we're getting ready for the first playoffs in St. Louis City SC history. Roman Berkey, the goaler for SC, joins us next on 101 ESPN.
City SC on the opening drive in our weekly segment we like to call Controlled Chaos. Brought to you by Keystone Event Staffing. Better people mean better events. Gutierrez, Shalloway. Shalloway in between two. Shalloway, another save. This time it's from Berkey. Top class goalkeeping at both ends. Gutierrez, Shalloway. Shalloway in between two. Shalloway, another save. This time it's from Berkey. Top class goalkeeping at both ends. Polito stepping forward. Ala Polito cuts it back. Johnny Russell. Big save, Berkey. And then Parker getting on the rebound. Voltaire hits it first time. Berkey just comes up with big time saves in big moments since he became the starting goalkeeper here in St. Louis City. With Brooke Grimsley and Kerry Davis, I'm Randy Carricker, and St. Louis City SC plays their first ever playoff game Sunday night, 9 o'clock at City Park against Sporting KC. And joining us right now on the Celebrity Line is friend of the show and St. Louis City SC keeper, Roman Berkey. Roman, good morning, and thanks for your time this morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Thank you. I'm good. How are you? We're doing well. We're excited to have you with us. How excited are you about getting the playoffs started here in St. Louis? Yeah, we are very excited here. Um, I mean, uh, focus is um, since a uh, couple of weeks already on focus uh, on the on the playoffs, and um, I think you could you could see that um, maybe the results weren't as good because we were like thinking ahead a little bit, uh, which shouldn't be. But um, I think we're going to be ready and uh, well prepared for the first playoff game. Well, Roman, kind of playing into that, obviously the regular season is a beast, but the postseason is a whole different animal in itself. What do you and the club want to bring into the postseason that you liked from the regular season, and what do you want to leave behind? Um, to be honest, we just want to enjoy that moment, um, you know, um, on having more games together uh, as a team because um, these these uh, players here um, and the whole the whole people here in the in in this club uh, are special and we really enjoy spending time together, you know, spending time together on the field, um, um, challenge us to, to our best. And um, now it's a knockoff round. Um, and um, yeah, so, um, and against Kansas, another derby. So it's going to be fun and uh, hopefully with a lot of fire in it. Roman, I, I know this game is meaningful. It means a lot. I, I, I wonder, do you all, do you ever, being the goalie for a city, ever look at the opposing goalie? You all play in Sporting Kansas this weekend. Do you look at the other side and send, 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 see Tim Malia and say, hey, I'm going to play better than you today? Uh, no. Uh, for me, it's just about me. To be honest, um, I always try to get one step better or a little bit better than, than I was yesterday, you know. Um, when it comes to to in training, you know, I just try to try and improve. Um, I have a very good goalkeeper coach, and I almost never look at the other goalkeeper and say I want to be better. Of course, I want to concede less goals than him. Uh, that's that's the main goal. But um, um, at the end of the day, uh, he had. Uh, I watched the game, uh, the first game, the the, the qualification game uh, from Kansas, and he had. Uh, he was really good in. in Penalty, penalties and shootout and uh, so I told the guys the next guy uh, next day guys just don't go just make it don't make it to the to the penalties we have to decide this game early <laughs> <laughs> Roman Berkey St. Louis City SC goaler with us on 101 ESPN and Roman when you have had success as a team against Sporting Kansas what has the key been I think when we stay true to our principles, when we when we press, when we um, bring the focus and the energy on the field, you know, um, especially at home, we could see with the fans in our back, uh, we had two great results um, away. We were like lacking a little bit of focus, and um, maybe after we conceded the first goal, um, we lost a little bit uh, the plan on the field. But um, yeah, we learned. Uh, we definitely learned uh, from it, and we will do better um, next time in the second game when we play away. But at home, um, we just have to stay true to our principles and let us a little bit uh, push as well from, from our fans, we'll, which will be uh, very important for us. Well, Roman, that's what I want to ask you about. How much do the fans factor into how you guys play, not only in the regular season, but now into postseason play? Um, when you see the record at home, uh, it's uh, pretty good. So um, it, it's 
kind of speaks for itself, you know, like we need our fans and um, <laughs> the fans were always a big part uh, from the beginning of the season. They pushed us, they pushed us to this 5-0 start and um, yeah, it's just very important. I would say it's the heart of the, of, of, the, of the club when it comes on game day, you know, when we have uh, the pressure on us and we know we just go very comfortable into a game at home. Um, because we know we have the fans, and um, that's a big thing, a big plus for us, I would say. Roman, have you all, as a team, as, as teammates, talked about what this means? I mean, you all have had a, a great season. You've dealt with injuries. People are back healthy now. Uh, you all have a chance to do something spectacular. Is that something that you all sit around and, and discuss? Uh, definitely. We look at um, what we have done so far, but um, we never say, we never talk about, you know, yeah, this was a great season because the season is not over yet. You know, we want to keep going. We want to we go as far as possible. And um, the next step will be uh, with a win on Sunday. And you guys are so capable. But Roman, it's still theoretically, you're in your first year. You're an expansion team. At what point, though, did Roman Berkey look around at the roster or was there a game or a moment where you said to yourself, this isn't an expansion team. We're as good as anybody. Uh, the first time I, I had the feeling that this could be something special was already in preseason when we um, had a meeting in um, – in uh, Fort, no, not Fort Lauderdale. It was Palm Springs, and um, yeah, we talked about uh, private stuff. You know, like what everyone went through at some point, and um, it was a very emotional uh, meeting. You know, between the players, and um, that was something special. You know, I player shared uh, private stories, and it's kind of. It was very good to get to know each other. You know how how you guys how the guys react sometimes um, in in difficult situations. You know what each of on or what what the guy needs um, when he goes through a hard hard phase. You know maybe during the season and every player is very very good in 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 getting to know that you know and feeling that um, we have n almost no egos in the team. You know so um, that's that's very important and I think that was the first time that I had the feeling, oh, this could be something special and we, we, we can go really far if we just stay like, like stay true to ourselves. And I know at least until recently, the preseason predictions were hung up in your locker room. Does this team go into the playoffs with, with a chip on their shoulder still? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we, we know that um, at the beginning of the season when we were 5-0, and oh, they still were talking about how lucky we are um, because the opponent gave us some or made mistakes and they lead, led to goals for us. And uh, we knew that this is not uh, this is not just luck. This is also um, hard work that um, brought us into these positions because we, uh, we were very aggressive in pressing and um, very aggressive on the field. We made a lot of fouls, so we put the opponent under pressure and it's still there, and um, we will take this until the end of the season. Final thing for Roman Berkey, the keeper for St. Louis City SC. We get up early to do a morning radio show, and so the 9 o'clock start affects us. How, if at all, does the 9 o'clock p.m. start affect Roman Berkey? Uh, this morning now, so no. I mean, uh, you know, the first. The first uh, eight forty-five. I usually eat breakfast, so I ask John if she can do it a little bit later. So I'm <laughs> on the breakfast. My mood is a little bit better, you know. I'm not a really a, a morning person, you know. I can I can be a little moody, but now I had my breakfast. I feel good, and I'm in the facility with the guys, so um, I feel good now. Terrific. Good. Well, good luck this weekend. Go get them in game one, and uh, we will talk to you soon, Roman. Th thanks so much for the time, and uh, let's get them. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Roman Berkey, the goalkeeper for St. Louis City SC. That is, I'm so excited, guys. I'm, I'm so excited. And I this week on the 101 on Sports that's airing on Fox 2 at 11, there's my little plug, mm -hmm. I went and spoke to Joachim Nielsen and also Samuel Adinarin, who, by the way, that, that seems to be a huge X factor is going to be those two players for the postseason. But it's interesting because as soon as Romy, Roman, when you asked him about when they knew that they had something special, they both said the exact same thing. Mm. So this team from preseason, they felt like very strongly that they were going to be able to do something special this year. It's and, been awesome. Yeah, And they have a chance to do something really special. They're really... 
They're, they're capable of beating anybody, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I, I could absolutely see it happening. That is Roman Berkey on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we're going to head to uh, Vancouver and Blues Handlers. Where, where are we going? Van Blanking Thank Coover. You, sir. <laughs> uh, Joe Vitale next on 101 ESPN. <laughs>Themselves on offering a vast selection of beer, wine, and spirits, all at prices that help you save. Their friendly staff is always ready to help you find the perfect bottle, no matter what the occasion. Whether you're a bourbon lover like me, or just looking to pick up a six pack of an old favorite, they have exactly what you need. Huge selection, friendly service, and great prices. Dirt Cheap is a place to go. Download the Dirt Cheap app and order curbside for your convenience. Remember, have fun, but be careful out there. I enjoyed talking to Dave Sylvester. He is the sales manager over at Gutter Pros, and we got a chance to get together last week, and he told me about what Gutter Pros does. And if you are in the market for new gutters for your home or your business, you need to get in touch with Gutter Pros at gutterpros.com. They do an amazing job, and they've, they've been Gutter Pros, and their newly designed website reflects that their name is what they are. They are pros in the gutter industry. Go to gutterpros.com and they can do everything. They can put new gutters on your home, whether it's five or six inch, or maybe for uh, a commercial job, they'll go seven or eight or nine inch gutters. But they also do soffit and fascia and siding. They do leaf protection for gutters, and they're fully insured with workers' comp and public liability insurance, lien waivers for all of their invoices, which is very important, and a really great professional staff of experienced salespeople and support staff that will do great work for you. If you come home and there is a tree against your house, and the gutter is crushed or if you just want to get new gutters because yours are old and worn out and dented get in touch with my friends at gutter pros gutterpros.com Shield Studio. This is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. This is the 
view from Vitaly. Brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. The Blues were winners last night in Calgary by a score of 3-0. They play the Vancouver Canucks tonight. Vancouver is in the Pacific time zone. So right now, it's 716 where Joe Vitale is. And he's kind enough to join us as he does every Friday morning here on the opening drive. Joey V, good morning. How you doing? Hey, Randy. Yeah, yeah, it's 715. We got in around 3. But you know what? I'm going to channel my inner Thomas Edison in this moment with you right now, I'm going to realize I only need a few hours of sleep and I can't wait to talk some hockey with you. You know, your producer, Matt, I, I love that guy because every time I answer the phone on a Friday morning, good morning, Joe, how are you doing this morning? Like, I need, I need my alarm clock when it goes off every morning. Good morning, Joe, you take a great day and get up. <laughs> We're off and running. Okay, so uh, Joey V, on uh, October 27th of 2011, David Freeze hit the home run, and you're all about, like St. Louis and, and the Cardinals and a fan, you were playing a home game against the Islanders that night for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So tell us about when you found out about the Cardinals' extra inning victory. What did that night look like for you? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Randy. I fell asleep. Yeah. I know it sounds horrible. I know I, I have to be honest with you, though. Uh, my whole team, they were going out downtown in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think it was about 70% of the guys were going out, and I was thinking about it. My daughter was only about four or five months old at the time. The season was just starting to rock and, and kicking the gear, and, and that was one of the years where I was kind of a bubble player, so I really was trying to focus on my rest. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you the grief I took the next morning when I came into the ring, because at that time, I didn't, you know, social media really didn't pick up just yet. So I'm coming in and, and I collected all my news in the players' lounge. You know, I get there, I change, I get my cup of coffee, and I come to the players' lounge, and I start taping my stick, and everyone is watching ESPN, and I'm watching all these highlights, and I'm like, I'm like a kid in a candy store watching, oh, what happened next? Oh, what happened next? And like, <laughs> you didn't watch this game? I'm like, man, I was tired. I'm out. And I'm watching these highlights unfold, and, and like you said, you just, you can't script it any better. A hometown kid like that, and uh, the, big, the biggest stage of all, and of course, I'm not sure if that was Joe Bucks where he said it. Was that the one where he said, we'll see you tomorrow night? That is. One, one yep. the, we had one of the best calls of all time. Uh, Joe certainly has a way about it where he just kind of says it. It's simple. It's right and direct, and it's to the point, uh, and it kind of gives you goosebumps when you look back on it. Joey, I was watching that game last night, and it, it came to my attention. Does um, Do the Calgary Flames have the best uniforms in all of NHL? Oh, listen, I mean... I like them. I, I really like them. I like the win yeah. more, but I loved those uniforms. Kerry, I'll tell you what, that, that red, it, it does stand out with, with the white. You know, it's mm-hmm. got, they have a, such rich history there, too. I mean, you're looking at the former blue, Al McGinnis, uh, up in the Raptors, of course, Stanley Cup champion with the Calgary Flames. Uh, it's the Saddle Dome, which if you've ever taken a look at this, this arena from the outside, it, it does just do that. It's like a big horse saddle. It, like, dips down, uh, which is amazing to me because I don't know how they keep the snow off of it where it doesn't cave in. But one of the oldest barns, of course, in the league, uh, one of the oldest, richest tradition teams in the league, uh, even it was Jamie Rivers, who first year on the broadcast team this year, this is the first time I think he's had in 15 or 16 years he's returned to Calgary because of just, you know, the last time he played here was when he was a player. And he said that the place has not changed one bit. So there's, mm-hmm. there's certainly a lot of ghosts and there's cobwebs throughout the building. They are building a new rink up in Calgary, though, from what I understand. Uh, it should be ready here in the next three to four years, which, which is huge for that fan base because they deserve – uh, they deserve a great rank, and they deserve certainly some winning, winning hockey. Well, that was a great bounce back effort by the Blues last night. The Blues going with 11 forwards and seven defensemen. Now that also meant that Tucker and Verona were healthy scratches. Some people were upset. Of course, they won the game, but prior to that, to the game, some people were upset that Verona was a healthy scratch in this. What did you think of that? And was that Baruby sending a message not only to Verona but the rest of the players? Well, Brooke, listen, I think it was, first of all, it's, it was a kind of a gutsy call by the coach. I think especially for Verona. Yeah, I think Tyler Tucker, I think in his own right, he understands this. And, you know, his game has been, it started out really great. He had a great camp. I think it's been a little bit up and down over the last three. And the reality is for Tyler Tucker is, you know, you're on short leash because you have a healthy Scott Pernovich and Robert Bortuzzo, and they got to get those guys in there as well. So I'm going to put that one on the side. That, that to me was just 
one of those necess- uh, necessary uh, exchanges you needed to have in personnel at some point on, on this road trip. But the Verona one, that one was a little bit different. I think that this was a this was a gutsy call by Craig Berube because you're taking you're taking your leading plus minus guy and second in points at the time, and for a team that's struggling to find offense, and you yank them and you make them a healthy scratch. I mean, a lot of fans who on paper you see this team, you're like, well, how can that be? But the reality is that this team, this coach has a really good pulse on this team, and. How to break this down in a nutshell as quickly as I can is this. This team was successful last year because they were they were good on the rush. Now, they weren't a playoff team. Uh, they scored the majority of their goals on the rush. They really prided themselves on a rush team. Yaku Verana, for the most part, is a fast rush type of player. This year, they come in, and they had to really reestablish how they're going to win games. You can't just win games off the rush. They proved that last year. You have to also have another element of being able to grind down low and play in the offensive zone, keep things to the outside and play defensive first hockey. Now you bring in Kevin Hayes, you bring in Oscar Sundquist, uh, Torbchenko is going to get a huge opportunity this year. They were, they built this team in the off season to really cater to that off- offensive zone play. The reality is coming into last night's game, Craig Ruby had not seen it enough and he had to make some changes and some switch ups. So yes, Yaku Barana, who I, w- I wouldn't say is, is the best at this so-called in foul right now of offensive zone time, uh, he can get there. And I think that's why he had him sit out and watch. But then you look at last night's game. That was, to me, the most complete game he played all year. So much offensive zone time. Go back and watch the highlight of Nick Letty's goal. I mean, that was just work from Torbchenko. It's forechecking from Jake Neighbors. And it's unbelievable puck protection from Kevin Hayes, a big body that they wanted to get down low and protect the puck. He did just that. He feeds it to Nick Letty. Plenty of traffic, and, and it goes in the net. So, Again, a gutsy call to sit out Verona, but it proved to be true and proved to be right. Joey, does that give a uh, kind of a light bulb moment to everyone else on the team saying, hey, you, we all have to play better because if not, there's a possibility that you could not be playing you could be watching uh, this game or the next game? Uh, Kerry, heck yeah, man. That, that is such a good point, and, and it's a great question because, listen, if I'm, if I'm any player like Yaku Verana and I'm a, I'm a point muncher and I, and, I, and I love offense and I want to get goals and points like he does too, if, if you don't have this other element of taking pride in protecting pucks and chipping them in and, and recognizing the right time to make a play and the right time to chip in and just keep things simple, if you're not going to get on their forecheck, this coach doesn't care how many points you have. You know, he really doesn't. And I think this is a conversation I had with, with Craig Berube specifically to start this year. You know, I think it was Chris Gerber who asked him, you know, what did you learn about coaching last year that you want to implement this year? And you know what, Craig, he, he took a second. And you could tell he was thinking about this question a lot. And, you know, for the, what he said was, and his answer was, I'm going to do things differently this year and I'm going to follow my gut. And I think what he was trying to say is there were some players last year that like Yaku Varan in the first four or five games, maybe were playing their game and not the team game. And I think he let it go. You know, is it, was he talking about maybe a Vladimir Tarasenko? Was he talking about a franchise score like that, where, yes, he was out there, he was getting his power play, power play points, but maybe five on five wasn't quite the player they needed him to be. Maybe he deserved a rest of time. Maybe he deserved to skip a shift. Was he talking about Jordan Cairo in his young development, where he'd have a game where he'd have two goals, but defensively he was atrocious? I think that he's trying to keep this team accountable in all zones in every single game about how they want to play. And I think the Yaku Verona one, for example, is exactly just that. So to answer your question, yes. If I'm, if I'm Jordan Cairo, for example, mm-hmm. and if I think I'm going to go out there and just play offense and get in the mix and get my shots and get my goals and get my points, but I'm not going to play that team-committed offensive style of game, then I think that Craig Bruby, he may not sit uh, Jordan Cairo to maybe watching the game from the rafters, but he's going to miss some shifts, and that's just a fact. Now, to be fair, I think Jordan Kyrie's played the best defensive hockey I've seen him play in a Blues uniform ever. I mean, six games in, I think he's been one of our best defensive forwards. I think the way he's tracking back and back checking and staying in the house and just he's very under control. He seems very poised. I know his point totals aren't quite there right now, but Craig Louie does not care about that. We had this kid for eight years. This is about an eight year development. Take your time. You know, let's really focus defensively. He's been awesome defensively. And then eventually he's going to find a rhythm where that defense leads to offense. And he's going to be the full 200-foot complete player that they're hoping to see him here. And uh, sooner the better, but hopefully the next year or so. Joey V, a couple more things. Number one, Barubi and Rick Tocca, the Vancouver head coach, are the best friends in hockey. And they're both very old school. If their teams are playing like they want them to play, tonight should be as old school a looking uh, hockey game as we'll see. 
It, it will. I mean, if you if you embrace the personality of your head coach, this is going to be this is going to be one of those dog fights. And I think that uh, that's what we're going to see. And I know that these two are best friends, you know, off the ice, but. But there is something about hockey coaches and their makeup where when the puck drops, there there are just no friends. And, and, and the one example I'll give you of this is when I was playing in Pittsburgh and I hit Daniel Briere. It was like the third to last game of the regular season, and it really fueled this Pittsburgh-Philadelphia Flyers series, which we'd see back that year in the playoffs in the first round. I hit Daniel Briere late in the game, and I caused a complete line brawl. And then look at the clip. You'll see Tony Granato, who's my assistant coach, and he's screaming at Peter Laviolette. And I thought I thought they were going to go out of between the benches. You know, uh, uh, Peter McGuire was between the benches. He's looking at these two guys screaming at each other. I mean, they wanted to kill each other, uh, Randy Carey and Brooke. I swear to you, uh, I get kicked out. Uh, and then Tony Granado gets kicked out, and we're all watching this. I mean, I'm fuming. I'm sweating. I'm in my equipment. I'm watching the TV in the lounge. He gets booted. He's taking off his mic. We're watching all this thing happen. I'm like, man, Tony, you were really mad at Peter Laviolette there. He goes, yeah, he was my best man at my wedding. And I was like, <laughs> I was just like what? Goes, yeah, we were in each other's weddings. We're like best friends. I go, oh, my God. Like, man, you know what? People would never know that by watching that short little clip. But these coaches are so connected, and, and they are such good friends off the ice. But it's just like it's just like fighters. You know, uh, you look at that great fight last night by Bortuzzo. I can't tell you how many times that – you know, fighters would, would fight and or I would fight and I would know a guy or someone else would know a guy or he's like the godfather, one of his sons. I mean, it is amazing when that puck drops, you just kind of, you flip that switch, you go on your Superman little little phone booth, you come out and you're just a different human. So I, I promise you one thing tonight, Craig Bruby's not going to hold back on Rick Tockett between the whistles and between the periods, but maybe after the game they can, they can catch a quick beer. Mm-hmm. All right, finally, Joey V, your number one ranked Halloween candy. Oh, listen, uh, I have a rule at our house. It's, it's a very simple rule. I said it to the kids last uh, week. I say it to them every year. I say, guys, who's excited for Halloween? They say, Dad, I'm excited for Halloween. What are we going to be? They give me it. I go, guys, one rule. And every parent's got a few rules of Halloween. Some are, you know, let's be safe. Um, let's make sure we stay together. Let's make sure we check in every hour. Uh, when it gets dark, let's come home. Like, my rule is simple. I go, guys, what's Dad's rule in Halloween? And my son, Harper, he's a smart kid. He says, all the Reese's peanut butter cups come to dad's room. And I go, that's it. Harper, Harper gets that's it. it. I go, if I find a Reese's peanut butter cup in your bag that next morning, you're in trouble. <laughs> all the Reese's peanut butter cups. I feel like you know how all, uh, all, all roads lead to Rome back in the day. All peanut butter cups lead to me. No. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Oh. That's, uh, that's mine, too. Uh, Joey V, have a great day in Vancouver. Thanks for waking up with us. We appreciate it. Get some rest, and we'll hear from you tonight. Sounds good, you guys. You guys have a great weekend. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. That is the great Joe Vitale with us on 101 ESPN. Coming up, it's a slow college football weekend, but there's a couple of games that could Affect M-I-Z-Z-O-U. That's next on 101 ESPN.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues last night with a 3 0 win in their second game of their Canadian road trip over the Calgary Flames. They'll now travel to Vancouver. Well, they already have to face off against the Canucks tonight. It's a late game, 9 p.m. puck drop here in St. Louis time. It'll be an 8 p.m. pregame right here on 101 ESPN. Over the weekend, we got the World Series starting tonight in Texas. 703 first pitch for game one in Texas. It'll be Zach Gallen facing off against Nathan Ivaldi for the home team. That'll be your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your road and shop 24 7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Feed the Tigers on the opening drive. This is the Morning Zoo on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by James Carlton of State Farm. Mention 101 ESPN to James's team when you request a quote, and they'll donate $20 to NIL on your behalf. CarltonInsurance.net. The Missouri football team has a bye this weekend. They're 3-1 and one in the conference. They're a game behind Georgia. Georgia, obviously, 4-0. Florida is also 3-1 and one in the conference, and Florida and Georgia meet tomorrow in college football. Mizzou also a game ahead of Tennessee and Kentucky in the conference, and those two meet tomorrow. So those two games tomorrow can have a big effect on Missouri as they head into the game against Georgia the following week. As somebody who wants to see Mizzou do well, my hope would be that Georgia would beat Florida. I'd rather get the game up on Florida and take things into your own destiny. And the other part of it is I don't want a ticked off Georgia team hosting Mizzou after they've lost a game because then that could get really ugly. So Yeah, you, you, you want you want Georgia to take care of business. So mm-hmm. you can go into that, that game with them not having a blemish on their record. And then if you're Mizzou, you have to beat them. It puts mm-hmm. you in a position. It puts you in the driver's seat for everything you want this season. I mean, literally everything is in front of you if you take care of your business. SEC East champs, SEC champions, Final Four uh, possibility, national championship mm-hmm. possibility. But it starts with the game versus Georgia next weekend. If you do that, hey, you're, you're – and, and, again, Illinois was in this position last year. We were 7-1 yep. and one mm-hmm. going into Michigan State. And then we lost three in a row. And so, you know, everything was in front of us at that time as as well last year. Everything, when you have a season like this, because of the programs that we have, Illinois, Missouri, you don't get many seasons like this. So Mm -hmm. when you have the opportunity and it's right there in front of you, you have to strike while the iron is hot. No excuses, no explanations. If you don't take care of your business, you have nowhere to look but at yourself. So hopefully they get it done. You sound like somebody who played for Tony Dungy. (laughs) Hey, I played for a lot of very, very, some great coaches, Hall Mm -hmm. of Famers, and yeah, we don't make excuses. You either get it done, you either get your job done or you don't. Well, and if you're a Mizzou fan, you're watching this Georgia-Florida game for many different reasons because one you're going to face Georgia next week but also you're going to be facing Florida here soon and I'm interested to see Graham Mertz is a very interesting quarterback for Florida and is actually pretty good I mean he is actually a really talented quarterback he's third nationally in completion percentage has 170 completions for almost 2,000 yards with 12 touchdowns and two interceptions so statistically I'd say that that makes him a pretty Pretty good good. quarterback but also for Georgia seeing what this looks like without Bowers because that's obviously a huge loss for Georgia but it is Georgia so they have plenty of depth it looks like Delp will be stepping up into that role as being the number one tight end for them but with Bowers he's going to be out for several games because he got that tightrope surgery for the high ankle sprain is that a plus for the Mizzou Tigers of course not wanting anybody to get injured is that a plus or is that more of concern because if you know who that player is going into the game you can at least have that full scouting report but now you don't know what exactly this Georgia offense is going to look like without him and they do have plenty of talent to go around I, I would say is the offensive is the right tackle left tackle mm-hmm. right guard left guard and center still healthy yeah and Georgia probably is going to be fine same Georgia, thing for the Georgia. D tackles and D ends no. like that's what those guys are the important pieces of, on any team mm-hmm. if you're a blue blood you don't like to see interlopers and hey people in media are fans and a guy named Mike Griffith of dog nation <laughs> went on the uh, Paul Feinbaum show and was asked about Mizzou coach Eli Drinkwitz. And here's what Mike Griffith, 
the uh, the journalist had to say. Been Eli Drinkwitz that you're you're buttering up these days. He's going to have his shot oh, in the stadium what, what, here. Uh, in a couple what, weeks. What, what, what what's your what's your beef with Eli Drinkwitz? I, I don't have a beef. I mean, but I've seen it a just, million. Uh, I just sideswiped the guys who are driving down the street I, here. No, I mean I've seen it a million times. You build these guys up, and then and then when they lose, you tear them down. And everybody's trying to turn Drink into the next Nick Saban. He's, look, he's won a couple of games. Let's not get carried away with Eli Drinkwitz. I, I, again, I, I made the I was one of the first people that said, "Is he a genius? Is he a nerd? Is he a cool guy?" He's looking pretty cool. He's looking like a genius. But let's not get carried away with the Nick Saban comparisons, Paul. I mean, even for you, that's hey, 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 uh, uh, Griff. First of all, it was a caller who called in and said he's the young Nick Saban. I never said that. Okay, you did say he was the early candidate for SEC Coach well, did, of the Year, yeah. and I think he is. <laughs> Yeah, well, meanwhile, you got a guy here that's won 24 well, in a row. That, that's scratch. fantastic. Uh, he he started out as the number one team in the country. Drink uh, was expected to win six or seven games. He started out with the number one team in the country. Do you see what's on? you got a quarterback that's making his eighth career start. Right? You, you, can't, you couldn't even tell yeah, me that they're meeting I, receiver listen, is right I, I've now. been to Athens. I know because I saw you. I, I, I don't need a primer on Kirby Smart. I, I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do, you know, I kind of agree. I think. As when it pertains to coach of the year, we tend to give it to the coach who has the lowest expectations and excels and exceeds those expectations, as opposed to the guy that wins every single game. You kind of you get yeah. you get fatigue. Oh, he's supposed to win. He's got the. It's hard to win. And Kirby's never won coach of the year. It, it, that's absurd. So yeah, I do agree to a degree with that. I mean, you you you're kind of giving an award to to someone that is not expected to be good, and all of a sudden they are great. So I, yeah. 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 Mark has some anger towards Ooh. Eli Drake. He yeah. even did you even hear how he called him a nerd in that yeah. discussion too? There was a lot of low blows that he had there towards Eli Drinkwitz. Hey, he had some feelings Drew, about it. Just focus on Georgia. Don't focus on that. Don't worry about that. And one thing about like you mentioned with Illinois last year, and Mizzou's been in this situation before too, is you just have to keep playing and you have to understand um, Carrie, you, you said the most operative thing. Winning is hard, and yes. you have to understand that it's never going to be easy. And I think that's one of the things Mizzou has run into in the past is where they get to these games where they think it's going to be easy and it's not. Yeah, and and you cannot assume that because you have a good year this year that next year, ew, if we don't take care of it this year, it's going to be okay. But we'll, we'll be <clears> back <throat> next year. You don't know that. You never know. So this yeah. may be the best team that Missouri has for the next 10 to 15 years, or it may be the be best team that they have until next year. You don't know. But while you're here in this moment, 7-1, and one, opportunity to play the number one team in the country next weekend, you have to take care of your business because you just do not know what next year holds. No. And I mean, look at you talked about it. What happened with Illinois last season? Yes. That was their best chance. I, I sat and watched it. I went through <laughs> it. Trust me. Excited. Excited. We're supposed to be Michigan State. Michigan State had half their team suspended and they come into Champaign and they beat us. And then you go into to Purdue, I believe, the following weekend and you lose that game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it can happen. But everything was in front of Illinois at that moment. They didn't take care of their business. Missouri has everything in front of them in this moment. They have to take care of their business. And Mizzou has the leading rusher in the SEC and the ninth leading rusher in the country in Cody Schrader. Tonight, he's going to be at the Fenton Barn Grill at 6 o'clock. That's kind of his hangout when he comes back to St. Louis. Of course, he's from St. Louis. So you can stop by the Fenton Barn Grill on Rudder Road in Fenton and meet Cody Schrader at 6 o'clock this evening. Ooh, that's fun. What is his favorite thing, you think, at Fenton Barn Grill? Oh, it's got to be the trashed wings, mm -hmm. right? And he'd Those probably get some of that signature golden sauce. Mm, loves them. Yeah. Those were pretty good. Yeah, they're really good. So uh, in, enjoy meeting Cody Schrader tonight, 6 o'clock at the Fenton Barn Grill. We're going to head down the stretch coming up. We've got some Metallica tickets to give away, and I'm sure Matthew will have something cool for us on Rock and Roll here on 101 ESPN.
Hey everyone, it's Brooke here. Ever since I moved here to St. Louis back in 2018, I've loved exploring my new home and thanks to the Metro, it's so much easier to do. I've lived in other cities growing up around Nashville that didn't provide public transportation and believe me, it led to a lot of congested traffic and made it harder to get to events like concerts and games. If you've been in Nashville, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that's why I love Metro Transit. It's easy to access for everyone. It's hockey season right now, so it can take you right over to Enterprise Center and take you to City Park this weekend without the hassle of parking or waiting in traffic trying to find an uber you know how bad those surge prices are metro transit just gets you straight to the action even if you haven't given metro a try yet it's something i can promise you other places wish they had available there's many benefits even if you don't ride a healthy and vibrant public transportation system helps attracts businesses to come here and creates a significant amount of jobs in the region and of course it helps many people get to their job so give metro a chance and experience the benefits for yourself thanks to metro you don't have to drive to thrive. Won't you please, won't you please, please won't you be my neighbor, my neighbor, I'm glad we're together again. Vasilev around Susi Vasilev! Putting another nail on that SKC playoff coffin and they're in trouble here again, Stroud trying to make absolutely sure, Stroud to the they played themselves into it, SKC. They were all over the place defensively. And Stroud is off the bench. And on the score sheet, 2-0. On the dinner end, Rosero. And he flicks it out. And the ball back for Klaus. It's raining goals at City Park. Number one in the West. With an exclamation point tonight. Kini running through. McIntosh off his line. Joel Kini cuts it over. And makes it three. A dream. FC Sunday night, 9 p.m. against Sporting Kansas. How many goals does it rain on Sunday night? I got 2 0 victory. A 2 0? 2 0. 2 0? 2 0. I like that. I'm going to go 3 0. I'm going to go 3 0. How about 4 1? 4 1 is good. I like them all. I like them all. <laughs> hey, we're going to give away tickets to Metallica. You can uh, win that pair of tickets. It's next Sunday night, November 5th at the Dome. Two night tickets and single show tickets on sale now. You can get all the details and find a bonus chance to win a pair of free tickets for Metallica now at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 ESPN mobile app. They're playing a huge no-repeat weekend next Friday and Sunday. Two different sets, two different opening acts for Metallica. And all you need to do is text in now to... 
314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO <laughs> to the Air Comfort <laughs> Service text line. And you need to come up with the number of what that Carrie will name. So I, when I looked at it, it says the members of the 92 Dream Team, and that's scratched uh-huh. off. So it says the Redeem Team. Uh-huh. You wanted it. I wanted you the Dream Team. To, no, no, you, we already did the Dream Team live on air. You don't get that easy. You said, no, no, do the Redeem Team. So All I right. said, you know what? Right there in the Let's moment, I crossed out Dream, and yes. I put in Redeem. 96? Yeah. Or uh, oh, two, oh, 2008. 2008. 2008. <laughs> I don't know what you 2008 mean. United oh, States men's national team okay. basketball roster. How many of the 13 players on this roster can Kerry Davis name in 30 seconds? Kerry Davis, are you ready, sir? You yes, see, sir. You had a weird look in your face when you first pulled it. Because, because I was you seem excited a little bit about more 92 confident. Dream Team. Well, yeah, but we already did that. Yeah, no. Well, don't don't challenge me on the air. Expect me not to follow right, let's up. Let's go to Come it. on now. All right. All right. 30 <laughs> seconds. Three, two, one. One, go. Kobe, LeBron, Carmelo, KG, uh, Vince Carter. Uh, who I just had him in my head. KG, Vince Carter, Kobe, LeBron, uh, AI, um, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. Uh, uh, who else am I missing? I'm missing one that I know, I know, I know. KG, D- KD, K- not KD, but KG, KD, maybe? KD, Kevin Durant. Um, it's one on my tip of my tongue, and I cannot figure it out. Who? LeBron Carmelo, AG, LeBron Carmelo. <clears throat> Who am I missing? Oh, Carrie Davis. I'm I disappointed know. in you today. Is it Chris Paul? You, uh, uh, you missed Westbrook. so many. First of all, Kevin Garnett, not. KG on went on that no, roster, KD, right? Nor KD. You, yeah, got, you got five correct on Who this roster. You're missing an Illini. Not uh, Dur- Deron Williams. 2008, he was still, he was still <laughs> cooking. Deron Williams was still cooking. Car- the full roster, Carlos Boozer, Jason oh, yeah. Kidd, LeBron JG. James, Deron Williams, Michael Red, Dwayne yeah. Wade, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne. Dwight Howard, Chris Bosh, Chris Paul, Tayshawn Prince, and Carmelo Anthony. I, the, the ones I knew, I knew. So, right. Kerry Davis there got go. five today, so whoever caught the closest to five is the winner of our Metallica KG tickets today. Chris, KG Vince was Carter not wasn't on, on that. that. Vince Carter was not on that one. That was 90. Oh, yeah. that was, which one year was I thinking? He jumped over Frederick in 04. That's probably what I was thinking. Yes, that's exactly. Gosh, and, and KG almost uh, busted that's blood vessel on his neck. Yeah, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. not. Yeah, that's not the redeem yeah. team. Sorry, buddy. Darn it. Oh, well, you got five. That's pretty good. We got a right. couple guesses in there at five, so we're gonna be able to. So we're gonna get a winner here for our Metallica tickets. And before we go, obviously, very really excited about the city versus sporting game, as you can tell from the open. There, uh, I had a dream, and I was like, I'm gonna make that an open. So right out of the gate, city is plus 105 to win this one. Uh, uh, sporting Kansas, you can get them for plus 220, or you can get a nine. 90-minute draw. So you can bet on a draw for regulation mm. as well. So yeah. you can get that for plus 260. But Is here's that before here, extra time? It's before extra time. It's 90 minutes. But here's the bet I might like even better. If you like City plus 105, I think this is going to be a slow game. I do think Sporting Kansas City is going to try to play it slow, and this is going to be a late goal that decides it. So I think you can get the first half draw for plus 125. Okay, that's a good bet. We'll take it. All right, we're taking one plus one twenty-five. Okay, are you, am I, are you mad that I'm not going outright? No, no, Carrie. Yeah, yeah. Carrie's disappointed that I don't want the outright win. I, I just don't know why you do that. But it's a better it's a, bet. Yeah, it's plus one hundred five. Plus one twenty-five. Or you you want to win money? I want to win money. This fictional money. I mean, we could put real money down. Then I would be more <laughs> than willing to go with the win on the money side, brother. Carrie, it is real money. What are you talking it, well, about? Where the hell is our payout? Let's turn off your camera. <laughs> <laughs> Play ball. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to college football really quickly. Oregon and Utah. Probably the best game of the day with number eight Oregon at number thirteen Utah. Oregon giving up six and a half. Utah getting six and a half. Over under is forty seven and a half. There. I'm going to take Oregon in that game. I know Utah has been playing well. They had a big win last week against USC. USC. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know that loss that, that Oregon mean? had on the road against Washington a couple of weeks ago was a tough loss for them. But I'm going to take Oregon in this one. I have a tremendous amount of spe- respect for Utah. I'm going to say that Utah it, it covers. I'm not going to say they win outright, okay. but I'm, I'm going to say that they cover that six and a half. Mm. I like that. Brooke, you like the cover? Yeah. You like Utah to cover? All right. And let's go to stay out on the West Coast. Colorado at UCLA. UCLA is a top 25 team, ranked 23, but I think this could be maybe a little bit of a bounce back for Dion's boys. They are getting 16 and a half points, though. Do they cover that, or is UCLA just keep on running? They cover that. Yeah, they cover 16. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on that one. Let's move over to the NFL. First off, I need uh, an outright bet here. The the Pats getting plus 9.5 at the Finns. Finns obviously giving up 9.5. Is that an easy number, or is that just enough? 
I think that's a pretty easy number. I think it's For them easy. to clear. I agree. All right. Yeah. We're going to take the Finns, mm -hmm. minus nine and a half. And, Randy, you said something in that in, in our segment about the NFL, so I had to look up a prop bet here. Mac Jones to throw an interception <laughs> in this game. I couldn't find one directly to Jalen Ramsey, so I just found the overall. Mac Jones to throw an interception right now. The yes is minus 148. The no is plus 112. So you're not getting even, you're not even getting good money yeah. on the Mac Jones yes bet, unfortunately. So maybe not the best bet to make, no. but I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to throw out the, the numbers for everybody there just in case. And Eagles commanders eagles are giving up seven points they are in washington against the commanders so they played the commanders earlier this year and they barely got out of there with washington the looked a lot better at the beginning of the season and philadelphia wasn't hadn't hit a stride yet i'm gonna say that they they take care of business against yeah. the commanders i think that's seven uh, points and, and cover that but they only won by three and i think it was a late field goal mm -hmm. when they played them earlier in the washington year washington was, had a had an opportunity they were moving the to, ball uh, in a way they haven't the last yeah, I don't know. I, I feel know like the Eagles have on. really found their groove, though, because yes. it's almost like if you think exactly. about the Chiefs and Broncos this weekend, that was close the yeah. last time they mm -hmm. played, but I don't think that's what's going to happen this weekend. Right. Yeah. You hopefully. look at what happened on Sunday night, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Knock on wood. No, I, I agree with you, Brooke. I, th I think Philadelphia, after that win over Miami, they look like they did last year. Exactly. All right. And anyway, sixth and final bet for the betting slip. It's going to be the overall World Series bet. Rangers right now going off minus 174. D backs plus 148. Who is your World Series pick? I'm going to bet the D backs. Okay. Because you want to make the money? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, I think you're going to lose money. I, I, I think so, too. I think this is a coin flip series. Really? Yeah. We'll know after tonight. I still well, think I it's going to be close, after tonight. but it's going to be the Rangers. Does, does Tori Lovello stick with his, his, his game plan and, and steal bases? Do they? Mm -hmm. Because I think maybe in the beginning of that NLCS, it was a little bit, you know, you, you worry about the whole thing and can't waste any of these outs, and they weren't, weren't running. And then they finally said, you know what? <laughs> We're going to lose if we don't play our yeah, game. Put so, pressure on the opposition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds like a hell of an idea. It what, is. I like where, it. where the heck he got that idea I from? No. Oh. No. Does the Gallon and Evaldi matchup, does one of those spike you and make you think one of these teams is taking day, game one for sure? Right now it is It is uh, D-backs uh, are, are getting an extra run and a half right now against the Rangers. I think this is a bullpen game. I, I think this game will be oh. won or lost uh, late. I, oh. I think Nathan no. Evaldi is not going to let that yeah. ball go until – the seventh inning. And I'm with, I, I think Gallon's the same way. I think right. Gallon's definitely going to bounce back. Gallon so, so far has gone five, five and a third, six, and six and a third. You yeah. think he goes, you think he goes deep, the deepest uh, he's gone in the playoffs? I would say, yeah, six and a third. All right. Yeah. Against that lineup. Yep. Right. Yeah. Flat. Well, there's your betting slip. Colorado plus 16 and a half. Utah plus six and a half. The Eagles minus seven. Finns minus nine and a half. And we're going to take over all the D-backs for plus 148 for the value and more value plays. First half draw for City and Sporting at plus 125. Sorry, Gary. Yeah, sorry. It's just a good yeah. bet. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. It's going to be a slow game. It's going to be a slog. All right. Hey, you can watch until right. the end. Until Our the end. whole day on the Airlines team uh, studio cam. Just go to YouTube and type in 101 ESPN STL. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. Of course, anything that you missed today, you'll be able to hear on our podcast brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Great work today by our producer, audio engineer, <laughs> Matthew Rocchio. Pleasure. He just dropped his papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gravity, <laughs> gravity dropped my papers. So, uh, Brooke, how are you feeling right now? I feel great. How about that? How about that? How about that? I love the fact that he didn't take ownership of them dropping the papers. He said gravity. gravity. <laughs> 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 I placed my papers on the counter. Uh, gravity. And he, was, and he was quick with it, that too. Dude, listen to his B word. <laughs> wow. Look your face. We want to see your face. Who said that? You want to see my face? Good luck to your say Hazelwood Central Hawks against yeah. Panville today. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. Coming come back uh, Monday with a W. That's the plan. All Gotta right. take care of business. Hey, we thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of the show for all of us until Monday morning at 7. Have a great weekend, St. Louis. And now for something completely different.